Shields up, Iron Breakers. We're kind of here coming at you with another episode of the Third Fleet Podcast. This is episode 35, and I'm here with the host of the most. I don't know exactly where I was going with that, but Gadget Hunter, my friend, we haven't seen ourselves for over a week. I've been kidnapped by my wife, went to the north of Portugal, or as you say, I went to visit Anne Orlando. Uh, and yeah, <laughs> that's that's what's been happening. And, and here's like a, a pre-warning already. Next week, I'm not going to be around either because my wife just kind of like booked things weird. So next week, I'm going out. Yeah, I'm I'm jealous. That'd be nice to be kidnapped by the wife. Sounds fun. <laughs> but this is this is a family friendly podcast, so we'll have to uh, we'll we'll gloss over those. Deals. How the heck did you grow back your beard so fast? It's uh, when when you're a, when you're a dwarf like me, when you're an iron breaker, a long beard like this stuff, just like. Oof, it, it, it just shows up. One, one of the one of the things that someone told me once, someone uh, I used to work with, was like, dude, if I could get a natural fade like that, I would kill to get a natural fade. Because, like, I don't trim this to look like this. It just happens naturally, so I'm super lucky with that. <laughs> Apparently, it doesn't happen like that for everyone. <laughs> wow. <laughs> I could grow out. I can go a year without shaving, and I would not get that. I would just look like I'm scruffed up and on drugs or something. Yeah, but it's like I'm I'm Portuguese, dude. Like we grow hair everywhere. You know, in in terms of facial hair, it's great. But then you have the back. That's that's not as good. <laughs> I was gonna say you're gonna get someone to quote this down in the comments saying, "I'm Portuguese. We grow hair everywhere." Yeah, exactly. 2021, Rurikan. <laughs> we do. We really do. <laughs> it's super crazy <laughs> but um yeah i went to northern portugal one one of the things that i'm i'm reminded of is like my country is amazingly beautiful and it's like it's easy to sometimes to forget that when you're in the city all the time so you go you go mm. up north and there's like these beautiful waterfalls that we have over there like natural springs of water and obviously there's castles but in portugal there's not just castles in the north. There's castles literally everywhere. Like you, you walk somewhere, you stumble onto a castle. Like actually, very close to my house, there's a castle. So it's like we have castles this all explain, over. The place. This explains the Dark Souls thing. It explains everything. Yeah, exactly. It's it, I've I've just always loved that uh, that whole medieval setting and do, whatnot. When you're feeling anxious, do you just naturally craft a campfire or? Yeah. <laughs> S something along those lines. I, I just I always have like a sword ready too, so that I can just set the 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 friggin the spawn point. It's uh. like, oh yeah, I'm gonna rest. Then I'll sacrifice some humanity to increase the potency of my Estus flask. It's friggin fantastic. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, it's well, I'm jealous. Uh, it sounds nice. It's been pretty crazy, and um, something has actually happened right before I went on vacation. Which uh, it's it's a little bit off topic, but I did wanted to bring it up. Because a long, long time ago, a young Rurikan, uh, I, I was I was faced with the choice of like, you know, when when you're a teenager and you're like, oh, I have to choose which area I'm I'm gonna focus on in my studies and all of this stuff. And I was faced with that choice. Is this a story about longsword? No, <laughs> no, <laughs> no. It's not, it's okay, it's about you were faced it's about it. gunlance. It's about gunlance, and it's about shield. No. Yeah. <laughs> but um, you know, I was I was faced with with that choice, right, that every young teenager is faced with. And through the influence of video games, I was like, I'm going to go with computer science. And I wanted to go with computer science because potentially I was thinking to myself, you know, if I work hard enough and if I study and if I do all of these things, one of these days I could potentially work at Blizzard. I was super, oh. I was su like, that That was... That's the bullet there, my Yeah, friend. exactly. So it's like, that was one of the reasons why I got into computer science and, you know, I was super passionate about StarCraft, Diablo 2, all of these games that they were working on. And then right before I went on vacation, there's a, a lawsuit that was filed against Activision Blizzard for this disgusting practices that they've been doing for years when it comes to females in their workplace and i don't want to get into the gory details because i've made like a million videos about it already and i have a million more in the bank that i'm going to be doing but 
that was so bad when when you read the stuff that was happening over there it was so incredibly bad that i just got really pissed off and one game that i was really looking forward to i probably told you about diablo 2 remaster they're finally making it diablo 2 is like one of my favorite games of all times and i'm not going to play it because i refuse to support that company right now actually i refuse to support that company probably forever you know what makes me more sad is the sad realization that this is not the only company oh, yeah. with issues like this. That is that is what is even more disturbing is that if, you, if this kind of crap can happen in large companies, imagine the crap that happens in smaller companies. Oh, yeah. And my gosh. And, and, the, and it's like... Uh, one, one of the worst things about it is that if you really look into historically what has happened to, to some of the gaming companies that have went through scandals like this, nothing really changes. Like in, in like six nothing changes, in like yeah. six months from now, people are gonna forget about this. People are not gonna be talking about this, and it's like whatever, it's just gonna get swept under the rug. And it's oh my god, it's it's really bad. Like U That's Ubisoft, horrible. Ubisoft went through something like this as well, and they're doing fine. Like they released their Assassin's Creed Valhalla, and people still bought it, and it's whatever. And it's going to be the same for Blizzard, most likely. They're going to like release Diablo 2 Remastered. There's a million people who are super excited to play it, and they're going to play it. And it's important to mention, like, I don't blame people for wanting to play their video game. It's not, it's not their fault. It's, it's just not their fault. I'm spoiled when it comes for choice with video games, so for me, it's whatever. But for other people, they'll, like, work their 10-hour days or whatever, and then they come ho- ten, and, and then they come home and have, like, two hours to unwind or something and they just want to play a video it's like whatever it is what it is but yeah that yeah. that that's something that's been on my mind quite a bit over this last week as well and following the developments of that which is kind of like a train crash that just keeps exploding and burning and it hasn't stopped fuming yet Ugh. yeah i mean i never played i don't think i've ever played a blizzard game in my I'm life i'm surprised to be honest i mean I'm not a PC gamer. I don't play competitive games. So I don't know. I Like I was like, for me, when I was a kid, like through elementary school, middle school, and it only dawned on me a few years back, I realized that I was coming full circle. I, I didn't make the connection, but I was obsessed with Capcom games. <laughs> I was a Capcom gamer. Like that was my company. Like I loved Mega Man to death. My birthday every year was a Mega Man game. I drew and made my own enemies for Mega Man. I played Street Fighter 2 in the arcade like crazy. And for sixth grade, um, the graduation for elementary school where they have you write what I want to be when I grow up, I said I want to live in Japan. I want to work with something connected to video games. And it was all Capcom obsession at that point. <laughs> and I never, it, for, for some reason, it never clicked throughout the years because I fell out of love. Not out of love. I just fell off when it came to Mega Man after X2 or so. I mean, life started getting complicated, right? So, like, games in general were starting to fade in the background. Uh, I had a, an obsession with, like, uh, Final Fantasy and some, some other games going on. Then I had to put games on hold for my life, and I started working, you know, and you move and everything. And then games got started back up again. And then I slowly started realizing all these games I love and play, a lot of them are from Capcom. And then you just went <laughs> right back to Capcom with uh, with 3 Ultimate, basically. <laughs> Yeah, basically. I mean, then it was. I mean, because I played some of the Phoenix Wright games, which were fantastic, and the writing. Oh, you want to you want to talk about good localization? Like those games are a fantastic uh, example. I think it was. Uh, I want to say it was Janet, but I don't want to mess up her name. Uh, who does the localization? They're so good. Um, and then it was like Monster Hunter, X Troopers. Like it just then you know dogma and Dude. you just add to the list. And it's like Dogma's I so like Capcom games, so <clears throat> it's kind of funny. But that's Blizzard. Yeah, I don't think I've ever played a Blizzard game, but it's it's a disgusting subject. I it's I'm I'm happy at least people are talking about it, and I'm happy. I'm not happy to hear that they apparently are going with a very bad group to do their external evaluation of stuff. Apparently this is a company well known for just blowing shit under the rug, which is unfortunate. Yeah. Um, I'd be naive to think 
like I think it's so weird because I mean I live in a country in which sexual harassment to women is way more rampant than it should be. Oh yeah. Like Japan is is freaking archaic and it's if I ever I'm I'm really fortunate that I've only worked in companies or been at companies where I never saw it. If I saw it, I wouldn't even care if I get fired. I would immediately like I'd be the foreigner. I'm just going like, dude, you know, and like calling it out. I've been just I just I have never had those interactions with like traditional Japanese companies, but I know that it's rampant here. And I think it's important for people to understand that just because you didn't experience it doesn't it mean that it didn't happen at other places? It just means that you got lucky. So, uh, yeah, I mean, discrimination is wrong uh, in all forms. So <sighs> I want to say I hope that this helps things get better. But then you look at stuff like, you know, Black Lives Matters. And I mean, that is the general movement, not like I, I, I for some reason I have to make a distinction now because there's a lot of people who don't like the organization. I'm talking about just the general idea that everyone should be treated equally and and black people especially in america are not and so like you would think that with all the stuff going on that it would get better and it just really doesn't and you know you support what it you can but it's just like humanity is kind of a messed up race of creatures in a way you know we're capable of such beautiful stuff but man are we primitive horrible animals at the same time so my my heart goes out to anybody who who's actively discriminated against it's uh it, it's one of those things that you know you you a lot of times you think about it and you're like it, it shouldn't be that hard to just be a decent human being but apparently for a lot of people it is like they just just can't be but these it shouldn't even take an effort like i don't even understand how you could have those types of feelings it's just like man yeah i guess product of your environment and all sorts of other factors go into it but like sheesh it's a happy I was raised well. It's a weird thing, but uh, l- l- let's move on because I, I I'm I'm much more I'm much more happy to like put a smile in people's faces than to constantly just like drudge up. Yeah. So I think at the end of if I want to make a joke out of it, even though I shouldn't, because it's not a joking matter. But this is just just trying to keep the conversation positive. Rui Khan does not actually hate longsword users. He's just joking. There's no discrimination going on there. No, that's a lie. It's a gag. <laughs> I don't actually hate Glavinus. I just, I just uh, piss on him for fun. So. Yeah. So <laughs> an- another thing that happened last week was I, uh, I grew older and wiser. No, you old man. No, not wow. definitely not wiser. <laughs> I am now happy birthday, old man. I am now thirty-nine years old. Woo. I'm I'm happy I haven't reached the forty the big forty milestone yet. I haven't leveled up to forty, but that's that's happening last year if I last that long. La- last year that's happening uh, next year if I last that long. But uh, <laughs> not not looking forward to reaching the well, big forty. I mean, people tell me I already look I'm like fifty. You. So it's <laughs> no, you don't. Well, look at the look at the, the the hair. It's all gone. It's it's that's because you grew too much of it too fast and you ran yeah, out. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> it went from here to here <laughs> to there. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it could be worse. You could be follically challenged beard wise and also be losing hair up top. That would Ay, that would be harder. Yeah, on that you. that would be harder because at least the beard count, count your blessings, my man. The the, the beard kind of disguises it a little bit, and you know. And if people and it leads for a good joke. Hey, man, uh, your hair has been reciting a little bit. It's like I play Dark Souls. Okay. I do, you know, it's like, <laughs> He's always in stressful situations, you know. He puts himself in danger. I actually, I actually realized uh, a, a couple of years ago that um, as as I started getting older and I was gaming, and you know, you'd get into more intense gaming sessions. I realized that like you'd get you'd get like your your hands like would start like shaking and stuff. You're like, <laughs> you're like when you're really hyper focused. That can't be good. And for you're you. just like, and your heart's going like. <laughs> <laughs> it's either really good for you and you're giving yourself a workout for like a cardio no. or it's really bad and you were we're we're cutting minutes off of our life. I don't I, know. I think it's really bad because it's basically your you know in order to enhance your reflexes. Well, you're panicking, yeah. Your your body is basically just like going into fl- fight, or flight. fight or flight. Yeah. And you're just like, "Oh man, look at my reflexes. Yeah. I'm so good right now." And then your heart's going like It's not good at all. 
Oh, man. Well, I'll say I've hit the big 40, and it's not... I actually liked it. I it's I don't... I know people don't like it, but I'm just... Uh, I'm just happy to be here every day, you know? So, and I can say 40 and still ticking, I'm feeling pretty good. <laughs> and, uh, you know, I... I'm fortunate, so... And, and then there's something about hitting 40 that when you look in the mirror and you're like, 40, I think for me and some other people when you think in your head like you're still i don't think we ever grow up right like we're always still like 13 to 16 in our heads right mentally I, right i definitely I have never grown up <laughs> like it's so weird <laughs> i don't want to grow up because like it's like we were so it's we like we were talking earlier and, and in a way you kind of grew up because you're like oh i've i had to do things in life so i put video games aside and i was like yeah i had to do things in life but i never stopped playing video games <laughs> so i definitely never grew up i i still feel like I'm 16 all the time. I'm very immature. Yeah, I'm extremely what, immature. I feel I feel like that myself as well. Um, I'm responsible with the roles that I'm given yeah. and the work that I have to do. But mentally, I'm a kid. Um, that's never changing. But so I look in the mirror and I'm like, "You don't look 40. You you still look young." And, you know, it felt it actually felt pretty good. Um, I think there's because in my head, 40 is like 40 is like my dad. You know, and that that marker just moves every year up. And so now to me. 40 is probably like 60 years old or something or in my head. I, so. I think there's like some, um, some psychological thing that I've read once where, you know, if, if all of your chemicals are perfectly fine in your brain, uh, like you are supposed to just, l you look more attractive to yourself than, than you actually look in real life. That you know, if your brain is working properly. Oh, so you're just no, saying I'm, I'm ugly. Not, okay, you're saying I'm ugly see, and old. I, when, when <laughs> it's I all started, in my head. When I started <laughs> that sentence, I was like, "This is gonna go so wrong." Damn, the burn, man, the burn. I, didn't, I felt good about how I look. Well, you know, psychologically speaking, you always tend to think you look good. Was, Damn, dude. No, Gaijin, you are very <laughs> sexy. Okay, I just want you to know, you're very, very sexy. You're very attractive. Hey, who else looks like a cat, right? Exactly. Uh, the cat is a sexy look. <laughs> <laughs> I only have two states. I have open mouth and closed mouth, and that's that's and it's usually open. So. I, I I hope that eventually they work on this script so they can have like an intermediate state so that it smoothens out a little bit. That'd be good. <laughs> <laughs> we could have like more than just the the state of opening and closing the mouth. Yes, I, I am nothing but keyframes. <laughs> That's all I. Have. <laughs> you want to talk about sidetracking and feeling old? Because I had a there was that point in my life where I just didn't get much gaming. I still to this day have never touched or played a GameCube or Dreamcast. Me neither. So it's like it's like those it's like two golden apparently like experiences in, in gaming history that I never got to partake well, in. Well, it's like... But I could say, hey, I got the Sega 32X on release date. That's... And then most people don't even remember that. I don't think that's a good thing. <laughs> the Sega 32 Yeah, it had like... Two, it, it had like... It had like two yeah, games. Yeah, exactly. That's what I was about to say. It costed like 200 bucks. <laughs> it was worth it for the one game. That, that's about what I, what I remember from that thing. It was like... It was it, it was expensive, I think, and at the same time, it had almost yeah. no games. But it's like it had like two games. The yeah. Mega Drive was the only console that I had as a young teenager because my parents said, "No, we're not buying any consoles for you. You you like video games too much. We'll buy you a PC instead." Wow. I was like, "Okay, I guess I'll just play on this. <laughs> <laughs> I guess I guess I'll just play they, on they this then. <laughs> That's fine." <laughs> but uh, so I missed out on a lot of stuff. Like I, I never had an NES, never had a Super NES. I, I only had the Mega Drive, uh, and never had any PlayStation, PlayStation Two, until eventually uh. I was an adult and I bought a Wii. <laughs> 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 hey, um, Twilight Princess was a pretty good game. All right, <laughs> I liked it. Hey, my my first. When I got to Japan on the very first day after checking into the dormitory that I was going to live in for the next year, the first thing I did was go to Akihabara and buy a PlayStation 2 because I had never played a PlayStation 2 and I really wanted to play Final Fantasy X. And they had what they called the international version, which had English in there because I, I didn't really know Japanese when I came here. Um, so I, I was really excited to play the game. Uh, so I bought that and played it and it was great. And I didn't get back into Nintendo until the DS Lite. Oh, no, no, no. I won a, G a Game Boy Advance on some stupid little machine on the street where you put in like 100 yen and you 
you like press a button and you either win or you lose. And I won a DS, uh, a Game Boy Advance, and that was an amazing system. <laughs> and then DS Lite, that's where I got hooked again. So nice. I've I've always heard good things about the DS. I, I did play a, a bit of 3DS, but it's, to me, it like the Switch is just so so much better. I was like, dude, I can just play on the big screen whenever <laughs> I want. So good. It's like, just give me that Switch. <laughs> Switch, which I actually man. I actually took with me on the vacation so that I could play some stories too. <laughs> bad, bad. That's like the. There was like a commercial like that. Nintendo had an official commercial where the guy's in bed. Oh, and no, And he's playing no, no. on his Switch. And his girlfriend goes by and it looks like, hey, honey. And he's kind of like, whatever, I'm playing games. No, 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 no. <laughs> I'm like, what? No, no, no. Listen, the second my girlfriend even looks at me in a, in a like, it it might not even be suggestive Throw at all. Throw that out the window. <laughs> it might not even be suggestive <laughs> at all. But if I, if I perceive it as even like, my, she might even just look at me to see what I I'm pounce. doing. And I'm just like. Oh. Hey! Exactly. Uh, like someone did those. What they had on those? The uh, t- interrupt your boyfriend wait, naked while he's say, playing video game challenge. You ever see those? Wait, scenes? did I say girlfriend? She's my wife. <laughs> yes, you did. Oh, no. Man, someone's gonna get in some. You know what? It's actually kind of sweet though. That means that you you're still in love. Oh well, yeah, I am. I mean, that's. <laughs> I s- I'm saving I, you. I guess. <laughs> no, no, no. I guess I still kind of like after how many years? Oh God, this is so bad. Because like, I mean, you just got back from what I'm guessing is like a date. So I mean, that's kind of nice to get date time with the yeah. wife. That's awesome. <laughs> it is. But uh, yeah, that was uh, uh, that was good. So, so Nintendo actually had a commercial where, where a guy ignores his, his his significant other to to keep playing. Sw- yeah, <laughs> yeah, I remember. It. Yeah, and it looked like he was just like saying sex. Uh. Uh-uh. Like give me, give me my games. I don't want to cuddle with you. I'm just like, are you kidding? Me? <laughs> I th- I think that um in in general, I don't, I think that a majority of gamers are not like that at all. It's like they they see the chance to exactly. like not nah, screw this. I can play this anytime. <laughs> no. If your significant other is suggestive, games are not going to win that the, fight. Nope, uh-huh. ever. <laughs> I don't care. I don't care how heated the battle is or how good it is. I don't care if there's a pause button or not. Some things just ain't worth it. I mean, I can even tell you my streaming schedule has been delayed quite a few times because of this. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, yeah, guys, I'll, I'll be, I'll be, I'll, I'll be like, I, I need to take like a lunch break, guys, and I'll be back at like 3 p.m. But like, a lunch break? <laughs> like, no, no. But it's like because it, I was going to take a lunch break, but then something happened in between. And then I'll be around at like 5 p.m. Like, hey, what's up, guys? <laughs> if you're like. I was just a little bit late. <laughs> Don't worry about it. Nothing happened. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's great, though. But uh, I've I've been following uh, Twitter here and there, and I've noticed that you've been tweeting yeah. furiously about how you and Yuna basically got into GU. And I know because I remember the last time we talked about she this, didn't I like was it. like so negative. No, what? The, no, I mean the the, the first time that I, I remember because because you uh, you had her play GU and you had her play World uh, after the Rise demo, if I remember correctly, because you wanted her to just see what GU used to be like. And it's not that she didn't like it, but she was like, "Yeah, I get it, but I'm not into it. I want to play the other ones, right? The more modern ones." That was kind of like the vibe uh, of that conversation the first time. Yeah, she she didn't play it as much as she saw it. And she's like, I mean, we still had content to play in yeah. the world and stuff like that. So it's just like, I, why would I go, uh, nah, this doesn't feel for me. But now that, like, you know, out of the 500 things there are to learn, she knows 490 of them. She only has to learn the 10 things that are different. So, like, when she go, when we went back, because I mean, it's summer break, we're looking for something to do. And she's like, I really want to understand the jokes because she watches a lot of Monster Hunter content now. Like, there's lots of references, the flexing. And jokes, and fan stuff about, and she knows the songs and she knows the monsters, but the thing is, like, she's never experienced it. So she's like, "What if we played Double Cross?" Which is what it's called here. And I was like, "Yeah, I'd, I'd buy it for you if you want to play it." And I was so cautious because I, so I'm gonna correct myself here. So I thought going back for someone who started with the newer games would be quite hard. 
And for some people it might be, but for her, it was actually f totally fine. No problems whatsoever. Um, and I think it's because she just played nearly, you know, how much would that be? 50, like 700 hours of modern Monster Hunter. Um, she's She's been eating it constantly every day for, since January. So, like, she knows most of the basics of the game because that doesn't change from the old game to the new games. So, I think for that, it made it much easier for her to enjoy it and uh, just grab on the differences. Some of the things we just laugh at, she's like, really? Like, there's you can't preview a full set at the armory? Are you joking me? You know, like, <laughs> it, it becomes a fun joke. And it's like, man, things got better. But she appreciates what it is what it is and it's fun the monsters are fast and furious and it's 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 been a really fun ride so we went through and we decided okay well i'm not going to go ahead and st i told her i'm just like i'm sorry i've played the game all the way through four times already you're not going to start I a fresh don't save want to start oh i was like i'm not starting fresh i was like do you want me to just use a low rank weapon and we'll do or yeah. what i'm like you know what Nah, let's let's not do the low rank grind i was like She's just got done with Rise and Iceborne. Like she, we can blow through low rank, and she can enjoy it later on her own time. Like there's that's, I don't think it'll be that. What? Fulfilling. Wait, 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 Plus, wait. I was like, summer break is only six weeks or something. We ain't got like half a year to like go. I want her to get into the meat of the content. But, but, but what, do you, what do you mean enjoy the low ranks of GU? <laughs> I mean, low ranks of GU is like, go get me some mushrooms. Go get me some rocks. Give me some yeah, account no. items. But these, I know, but the game gives you all these welcome packs, so it pretty much allows you to just blaze into like mid-high rank really easily, yeah. which is great because they give you like a hundred of the, the, the slick axes and all these ores and armor orbs and all this stuff. So uh, we, we just... She had she didn't even touch village. We went straight online, um, and we we crushed low rank right away. Uh, got into high rank. Um, made a set for her. I was at for high rank. I was like sitting out half the hunts, just you know watching her and uh, letting her enjoy the back and forth without trying to end the hunt too fast. So I didn't want to kill stuff, and I wanted her to enjoy it. So it was really fun just. Standing there and popping a heel every now and then and just letting her enjoy the hunts. And then uh, we got into G rank the other day because, like, I think we've only played for like 38 or 40 hours, uh, probably maybe 40 hours at this point, 40, 42 or something. Um, but we just beat Atal Ka last night, um, which was, of course, amazing. She's known of the monster, so none of these are surprises to her, but it was still an exhilarating hunt for her to experience for the first time. Uh, so we went through G rank. I tell you one thing I forgot was how long it takes to craft a full G rank set. Cause so we decided she's going with adept longsword and she's really happy that she did. She's enjoying it quite a bit. I know. I know. Um, Hey, there's no spirit helm breakers or anything. It's still a long sword. <laughs> Let her in. <laughs> So she she's having a good time with that. Um, she hasn't she doesn't hasn't shown any interest to really experiment with the other weapons right yet. Um, but we were doing that, and we're like, well, we got to get you a good set. And she's like, well, I want a Mizutsune set. She likes Mizutsune, so I was like, okay. I think it took like I want to say eleven G rank hunts of Mizutsune, which is no small task. Like two or three of the low rank one or high ranks to get some materials. A few G rank Hermitors and a G rank Arzeros, and then some mining, and then we were finally able to make her full set. Like it took that long. Yep. <laughs> and so it was a long process, but she could immediately appreciate it. It was just like, ooh, got the new digs, I got the new defense is 200 higher than what I was used to. Um, because she was doing G2 with just her high rank Shagaru uh, outfit. Like that was enough, which I think was fine. Um, so. We had a good time going through G rank. We actually, the last two quests of G rank always bugged me, which was, because I mean, it's just two of us doing G rank, so it's going to take a little bit longer than playing it online with other people because yeah. it doesn't scale for difficulty. That being said, I think most of our hunts were over in about nine minutes. I think that was the average time for G rank hunts. That's, us, which is that is good. really it's good. Average. It's not just pretty good. That is really good for, in, in my opinion, for G rank GU. 
Nine minutes for solo mon- good. for like one monster hunts. Yeah. But I remember when I did G rank solo with uh, Generations Ultimate. There's the G four quest where it's like fight a Glavinus and a Gravios, and it's just like it's just the nature that their health is so high it just takes forever. So I was like, okay, there's like two or three of these quests that are just a pain in the butt. We've done them before. It's just a matter of slogging through it. I was like, let's just make an online room. And because I really miss this feature and they should bring it back. Rise doesn't have it. World, I don't even think has it. But you're able to name the room. You Not just put a message, but you can name the room. And so for the room name, we said um, doing G4 key quests, uh, feel free to join. In Japanese, because yeah. we're playing the ja- I have to play the Japanese version. So, like my English version of the game, I'm loaded with stuff. I have all my great bow gun sets and everything. I don't have any of that in the Japanese version because I just played as a prowler for most of it. So it's like, ah, or switch axe. Um, so we put that up there, and boom! Immediately, four people room. There's still people playing. Oh yeah. <laughs> so it was really usually, great. Usually, what so you we were see, able to go on there and we, usually what you see in the English one is like you see people doing uh, G rank turns. something turns. It's always G turns. Or, yeah, ro- Robin or weird Robin, Robin or I can't remember. Round that. Robin or something like weird that. Turn. And yeah, and then there's also people doing like the the longer quests. Like what was his name? The skeleton dude. Skeleton dude, octopus, uh, yeah, uh, uh, Nar- Nar- Narcos, yeah. That, that's something that I would see yeah. often as well. People queuing for the Narcos because that thing takes like forever to kill if you're solo. <laughs> oh yeah, she really enjoyed Lao Shaolong. I know people call it the most boringest fight in the franchise, and it's it it gets very tedious, but it's a spectacle hunt, and she really enjoys the spectacle, and I can appreciate that. So we only had to do two of them for her to make the long sword from him, which was good. And we were able to kill it, I think, in about 23 minutes. But that's because I had put in so much time researching how to do it solo. Um, and I made a video on it, like, years yeah. ago. That I, like, we knew exactly what to do. So, that was fun. Um, but we got through the hunts with other people. She got to see old school Japanese etiquette. And she she immediately called it out. She's like, whoa. Because the etiquette is so high standard in the Japanese only versions of that game where I think I made a video on etiquette years and years ago, but the worst thing that you can do in a Japanese room for cla- I call it classic monster hunter, but it's not, it's, it's just old portable series yeah. stuff. When you enter an online room, if you don't greet everybody in the room, it's like the biggest taboo. Like that's the most important thing to do. I don't care if you have crap armor on, I don't care what you are. You come in, you say hi. <laughs> like It's like, that's the thing, you know? And then everyone queues up, the host always says, you know, let's do this, or they give a bow a gesture, and then they go off. It's like, it's totally scripted. Like, everyone knows the rhythm and the routine, and everyone's really cordial, using lots of life powders, very kind, making sure to spam the don't mind, you know, don't worry about it if someone dies, and, you know, say, okay, I'm leaving the room, thanks for letting me join, and it's just like, it's a very cool experience. I think Japanese, how much people communicate. I think Japanese players would love my Gunlance build. It's so supportive. It's like Alchemist <laughs> Gunlands shaking the barrel. Woo! Hey, look, SP for everybody! Wee! <laughs> but you know what? There's still a problem, though, even in Japan still, is that when I posted the room and I was still playing as my Prowler, level 99 oh, no. and kick, I could solo EX Bloodbath, no problem. You know, under 20 minutes, you know, like I can do G rank quest sub 10 solo with that cat, and nobody was coming. And then I said, Watch this. Everyone's got cat allergies, is what I call it. You know. And so I immediately changed to a hunter, and guess what happened? Within 30 seconds, two people came in the room. I was like, I forgot. They can see which weapon I'm using. And they saw a cat, and they said, uh uh. Never mind, my hunter rank was high. They're like, "Uh -uh." oh my God. Not doing that. (laughs) And it's worse. It's worse in Japan than it ever was in the West. And I still get, you know, I still get booted from rooms in Monster Hunter Generations Ultimate, like bla- ba- bad Western players. I still get kicked for rooms if I join it as a cat. It's so stupid. I'm like, I could kill monsters faster than you it's, can. It's so, Leave me alone. It's so weird because I, I do remember seeing like uh, a tier list when I was researching uh, GU and I was like, I just want to see a tier list to see where the weapons are. Which, which is funny because for a lot of people, they'll see a tier list and they'll be like, okay, I should aim 
for the weapon that's higher. And at the time that I looked at the tier list, this was even on stream, I looked at a tier list, and at the time, I was like, trying to learn lance striker lance in gu and oh, i look so and good. i look at the Ooh. tier list and it's like number one or something like that it's very close to the top if it wasn't even just straight up at it's... the top and i was like oh this is great and then i look at the bottom of the list and what's their gun lens and i was like you know what i'm a main Prowler. gun lance oh. <laughs> no actually you're right Prowler, gun lance was Prowler a was beast below. in that game no it wasn't <laughs> It was terrible. Yeah, what? Wait, are you kidding me? GU? Gun Lance was amazing. Oh, wait, no, hang on. I'm I'm getting myself Yeah, confused. you are. GU is when they introduced the weird heat gauge. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. Yeah, never mind. So, Gun Lance was not at the bottom. That's right, because that was the point that I was going to make. Gun Lance is close to the bottom. It was just, just above, I think, either Hunting Horn or Prowler. Prowler. It was like Hunting Horn close to the bottom. Yeah. Prowl Prowler was at the very bottom, very, very, very bottom. Yeah. And so I also, I mean, I I understand that people got frustrated, right? Because like, a lot of people don't know how to play yeah. Prowler, so like they they could be level ninety nine, but they've got like no skill set up. Their passes aren't even equipped, and they're just sitting there using the X button the entire hunt, or they're running yeah. away, and they're just, or constantly running back to camp to restore their acorns. And it's like. I get it, but come on. So, so it's like it's more like a, a community problem almost that so many people didn't research how to, which is weird because didn't Prowlers come in kind of like as the uh, girlfriend character? It's like you could have your significant other play as the cat, and but that's that that's the problem yeah. is that in and I'm happy they didn't do it in the West, but in Japan they marketed it wrong. They said. For those who are not good at action games, you can still enjoy Monster Hunter oh, if you play as a no. <laughs> I'm like, you idiots. <laughs> so they gave it this idea. So so from the very beginning of Generations or Cross out here, they had this idea that Prowlers are crap. Like, they don't do damage. They're literally just there as an easy mode for people who want to take a long time to kill stuff. And, and oh. but, but yeah, the... And so the the discrimination against the prowlers is much worse in Japan than it is in the West because of that. But the the thing is then that uh, you know you see the tier lists with the prowlers at the bottom, and that just kind of like reinforces people's thoughts. And I, and I seem to remember I looked at it and I was like, huh, prowlers are really bad, huh? And then I remember like, but wait a minute, Gaijin plays a prowler. I think he's he's doing pretty all right. Like, what's what's what gives? And then other people would tell me like, oh no, dude, I play prowler. I kill. EX bloodbath like no problem and I'm just like dude I, c I can barely take on solo G rank quest with my gun lance how's it supposed yeah. to be better than prowler like what do you mean <laughs> yeah so like I, I got in some skirmishes on twitter over this years ago where it was a more it was it goes back to the old wrong nuance on twitter which happens all oh. the time which is that it was basically speed running community was like it's it's low tier trash and i would agree yeah in in a speed run situation you could do some amazing speed runs by the way with a prowler but are they amazing as compared to the other weapons where the fact that even a 10 second gap is called trash like that's a big difference uh, and this could be like a minute or two different yeah of course it's not good for competitive like you don't bring a prowler to a, a heavy bow gun fight i mean come on now right like that's I would never, ever argue that, that. But is it a viable and fun and powerful weapon? Uh-huh. If you know how to use it, it's great. So, Which, Prowlers don't feel bad. It, I still I still rack the Prowler. It, it's funny because fun. uh, I have uh, the, the friend who got me into Monster Hunter. Whenever we would talk about you, I tell him, like, oh, dude, I've been optimizing my, my Palicos so that they become real good. And he's like, ah, Palicos are useless in this game. And I'm like, what? Are you crazy? <laughs> What's wrong with you? <laughs> like my friggin' They nerfed them in four they nerfed them in Generations Ultimate because the values were lowered. I'm like and they also gave it tons of utility to completely offset it. You just don't know how to play the weapon. There's there's so many, you know, good things that you can do with Yeah, I roll my eyes. And, and so many different play styles that you can get with prowlers that it's actually insane. Yeah. Like it, it yeah, but if I want to go and pick up, you know, like a broken rapid shot bow brave style, yeah, I'm going to kill stuff much faster because that is just broken dumb. But it's like, is that fun for me? Not really. Like what, one know, of the coolest so. things was what the, the first time that I saw um, a friend of mine who was playing Alchemy Charge Blade, which is one of the things that got <laughs> me into Alchemy was that we we would be fighting like a monster and this was still like in G rank and the 
like we even used this strategy in like G rank silver Rathalos. And sometimes we were able to, to do this, which is my friend would like get the, the things to do the alchemy fireball. <laughs> and then because yeah. silver Rathalos is in the air so much and he wouldn't be able to like hit it. Cause he wasn't either. He wasn't playing aerial or whatever. <laughs> it was, it was, woo. And sometimes he would fall <laughs> from a friggin' alchemy, which there's almost no damage. That thing does like no damage. But he would like bring down Silver Rathalos from the air with an alchemy fireball. I was like, dude, that thing's amazing. I need to do that. That thing looks like so much fun. Uh, it was really good. Yeah, but man, yeah, we're having a good time. So I think we'll, now that we got through At Atal, what she really wanted to do. How did she like Atal Ka? Uh, she might actually. Atal Ka is just so oh, cool. She loved it. Loved it. Loved it. She's seen it before, but never like the full, full hunt, and she never got to do it. Seeing it and doing it is two oh, yeah. very different things. So, like, we had a really good time. She loved at Cantor, and she loved Ukonlos. Um, I think she loved every, almost every hunt. There's a few monsters she absolutely hates in GU, and you could probably already guess who they are because they are the standard, I hate this. She's got a very easy pattern. The monsters I love are the monsters she hates. It's, it's as simple as that. So anything that charges at you all the time, she hates it. So, like, Diablos, she absolutely hated. And she's like, how many times... Is he, why is he so fast? Why does he spam his tail slams? Why is always he targeting me? I hate this monster. I can't even tell where he's popping up. <laughs> and it's like... I think we got to one hunt, which it was like two cards. And she said, can you just finish him? I'm like, yeah, I got it. Don't worry. So she went off and she was mining some wars. And I... As Diablos is my favorite hunt in the game. Because, like, I just love... Well, maybe not like the favorite hunt, but one of my favorites, you know. I like I enjoy it a lot. Um, the other monsters she really disliked. Um, there was a few that she really hated. Um uh actually let me ask her really quick because I just yeah. forgot. Nah, nah, Yuna. <laughs> G, uh, Real time G feedback from Yuna. Looks like he's surprised by the answer. Wow. What's going on? Okay, so number one, she says, number one, Alatrion. She hates? She says, what a, what a piece of junk. Yeah, I, I, I'll. She loves. I hate. She loves Alatrion. I hate fourth generation Alatrion. Yeah, I hate Al as well. Alatrion. Is, it's Alatrion, remember? Alatrion. <laughs> Alatrion. Okay, fine. <laughs> I don't know. But um, it's like, I don't, I don't like him either. I thought he was boring as hell. Uh, and I I think I... Oh, he's so I, I think I did him before he came out in um in World. And I was kind of concerned because I was like, oh my God. I'm not sure I'm looking forward to this fight anymore because this fight is terrible. I hate it. It's yeah. like, he would, it's so he would go into the air and then he would stay in the air for like half an hour. And I'm sitting in the ground with my gun lens like... Uh, yep. Like if it was Rise, I'd be like, "This is fine. I'll just fly up there and beat the crap out of you anyway." Yeah. But like, <laughs> listen, me, I'm I'm sitting down there with my cat throwing boomerangs. Like I don't know why you're complaining. Yeah. Oh, that's because you can't reach exactly. it. Exactly. So like she and but I will agree, it is a snore fest of a hunt. So especially coming after the amazing version they did yeah. in Iceborne, she was just like, "I hate this monster." But um, she said her second most hated monster was Royal Ludroth. What? That was the one that was the one that surprised. <laughs> she likes the monster, you know, fairly well in Rise. She hated it. Because the thing is quite fast in GU compared to how fast it is in the other games, and she cannot predict what it's about to do. Like it'll just roll or jump in different directions and she can't read it. And it reminds me of me with the Shogun Senator. I cannot read I I love the monster and I've fought it many, many times. I just cannot read where that thing is going to move next. It's like Pac-Man. I just suck at it. Like, I just don't know what it's about to do. And it catches me off guard every time. She did not like Royal Ludroth, which surprised the living hell out of me. That, that is because those are two monsters like, really? that for me, like, they're... I'll, I'll even just, like, solo farm Shogun in, in G-Rank. Yeah, it's yeah. like, pfft, not even a problem. It's just a fun, relaxing hunt. Yeah. It's like fishing, you know? It's, it's like, okay. And, and especially with... Her third hated was Baroth. She hated Baroth. 
Again, she doesn't like monsters that charge at you, which is funny because she plays Adept. Yeah, exactly. So it's like, I, I was just thinking about this. Like, you, I thought she said she played Adept Longsword. Like, this should be great. A monster that charges that just charges your gauge yeah. all the time. Like, no, what she doesn't like is she says like they'll charge, but then they they either charge too far away or they immediately start doing something else again. And it's like, dude. I can't run in and do a combo against you if you're just running off and doing something again. Uh, like, correct me if I'm wrong, but if you dodge with adept style, well, I I guess this happens with sword and shield. I don't know what it's like with the gunlets, but like with the sword and shield, immediately after the dodge, you get like a little dash. Isn't that the same thing for yeah, longsword? Yeah. You get a little dash. Yeah, and then you do an attack, and then you can do the behind the back, and it levels you up, and it's it's nice and powerful. Yeah. It's just. You gotta do the dash, and you gotta land that first hit in order to do the finish. Like, and usually the monster. Well, she hasn't played much yeah. of the game, so she's probably running in wrong directions and yeah, stuff yeah. like that. But she hates monsters that that dash at you. Really like when, hard. when I'm playing um, when I'm playing adept sword and shield, which is the only adept style that I I played because I can't get the timing of the the insta block thing on GU to save my life. Yeah, and yeah. I know that it's like the oh, most can't. powerful. Uh, I think it's I think it's, it's actually really the most powerful Gunlands playstyle in that game, if I'm not mistaken. Like I've seen videos from Kanta, yeah, just destroying monsters with adept Gunlands. Oh, it's crazy! And yeah. and I'm just like I can't I can't do it. I don't know what's wrong with me. I can't time the. It, it's weird because like I can time so many things great in World and Rise, but in GU I cannot time like perfect guards or anything like that. So I just end up messing it up all the time. That's why I play Alchemy Gunlands. Yeah. It's great. <laughs> Never have to worry about any of yeah, that. Yeah, let me ask her who her let me ask her who her top three favorites so far are. There's a lot of monsters she hasn't hunted, but I'm curious. Yeah. Man. <laughs> you guys get the Japanese uh gaijin today. <laughs> Magara Magara? Or Shigaru? Amatsu, Watch watch her not like Amatsu. <laughs> no, so she doesn't have like favorites yet because she's still playing and experiencing them, but she really loved Atelka, of yeah. course. Yeah. Um who does how can you Dude, not tell so good. you know what the, the cool thing is i actually for the first time ever and i've fought that monster over a hundred times for the first time ever probably because we're not four people destroying it i hit it with the dragonator i've never done that before i'm pretty sure i hit it with the dragonator plenty of times yeah Our there's groups. one point where it started running forward towards the fortress and yeah. i had never seen that before i'm like wait a second and I hit it. I'm like, oh my god, that's the first time I've ever done that. That's amazing. One of the and she got when she got knit, she got one shot killed by the pylon or whatever. It was so funny. We were just laughing. The one so that's hard. spinning. Oh, just oh the, <laughs> the slow. Oh, and the wheels, great. Yeah. Like, and then you know she gets up in the last phase. I'm like, oh god, she's got a dragonator. Run. <laughs> it's the the that fight. I think is a, a testament to the quality of animations in the Monster Hunter team when you look at this oh, being yeah. one of the you know one of the older style games and you see the animations on Atalka because this is not like motion capture which you know a lot of companies use nowadays that is hand yeah. at least as far as I'm aware the animations on Atalka is all hand animated and you see when Atalka grabs the wheel and spins it around because like this is something that for a lot of people they won't even bat an eye to it but to me because i'm like i always say i'm an animation maniac like this is the most important thing yeah. to me when it comes to visuals of a game is the animations and that animation of atalka spinning the thing around and just the illusion of momentum that they're able to do as the thing goes oh, yeah. and the tumbles. Weight, the weight, inertia, yeah. everything is so it, well done. It's like, and then you look at that and you're like, this thing was hand animated. Do you understand what it's like to just like get Atalka to do this? And then the thing goes, -doo 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 -doo. and it, it really carries weight. Like you look at that and you're like, if that thing hits, that thing's going to hurt. <laughs> that thing's insane. And it does. <laughs> well, yeah. What's funny is when when uh, she summons up the dragonators, yeah. I was like, you know, I can throw a flashbang and we can just destroy him. And she's like, don't you dare! 
she and she yelled at me like, don't you dare you she's like this is what makes it fun i don't want yeah you can you can you can break and flinch her out of the dragon eaters and she's like don't you dare. i didn't know that <laughs> <clears throat> yeah she's like i want to see this i like this yeah. so we had a lot of fun with that um and she said uh she likes all the the magalas so like yeah. gore magala shagaru magala uh, we we did chaotic magala but we did it last night at 2 45 in the morning so we were quite exhausted so we didn't beat it because it was like oh i forgot it hits this hard whoops and so we died and i was like you know what we're just tired we're exhausted you know that i crafted uh chaotic gore magala's gun lance um to use with the bloodbath diablo set <laughs> Hmm. How is it? Because uh, Bloodbath Diablos has like negative crits. It's like the whole negative crits for me comes all yeah, the yeah, way yeah. from GU. But the um, the gun lance goes at like minus 45%. Sorry, he is like, did you just call me? She's like, did you say nah? I'm like, no. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't. But uh, yeah, that, that gun lance goes to like uh, negative 45 affinity and it's pretty good to proc. Ooh, yeah. And then nice. you have like maximum attack on top of it. And sometimes I'd play uh, aerial gun lance with that set. So you're just like slam, slam, <laughs> slam into the face. It's like the, the, the speed running gun lance from Monster Hunter World. For those of you who saw like the slap lance, it kind of becomes a play style similar to that. But yeah. Oh, I love- <laughs> I mean, I use the I use the weathered uh, bow. I do a negative crit set for that. Yeah. It's minus minus seventy. Jeez. And I remember, like, there was one time where I it was like, I pulled a minus ten expert charm, and I'm like, yes. <laughs> and people were like, what? <laughs> like, why are you so happy? This thing is awesome. <laughs> I I miss negative skills. I think they were. It, it was fun. It's interesting. It was fun to kind of have to balance your set around where it's like, well, if I get handicraft, then I'm not going to get sharpness. If I get sharpness, then that razor sharp's not going. Yeah, out. and that's why everybody played Joe Sienna so that they could have both. <laughs> and then they had crappy defense in the all. Yeah, game. which which is my um, case, a hundred percent. But uh, yeah, and then uh, what is the other monster? She said she really liked Enematsu. She really enjoyed okay. that hunt. Uh, however, she's not done the G rank one, which I think is much more fun than high rank. So uh, we'll do that. We have a lot of hunts we haven't done. Yeah. So. Oh, and, and the, the, the real surprise. Have you done Deviants? Yeah, we haven't even touched oh. Deviants. We only did one. Which? We did um, level one and level two for uh, Dread Queen. Dread Queen, okay. Yeah. Yeah. And she shares the same feeling that I have. So every time we get into a map and she's like, I hate this map. This is so... St-. She's like... This is a second generation map, isn't it? I'm like, uh-huh. <laughs> <laughs> like, I hate how large those damn maps are. They are so long. It's like, uh. But um, I don't think it. No, should we? We enjoyed those. I don't think it bothers me as much. Uh, the the older maps, to be honest, I'm like, oh, it's fine. It does, doesn't look as good as the newer stuff, but I'm I don't really have a big problem with it. Mm. Then um, the the surprise, though, I think that was really fun for her. And it was fun for me the first time as well. Was um, the Celtus, the both of them? So the, the Celtus is good. What's the, the What's the name in English? Um, what do you mean, Celtus Queen? Celtus Queen. Celtus Queen. Yeah. <laughs> so we're playing in Japanese. So now my name, my all everything in my head yeah. now is it going back to Japanese? Um, like Aru Sere is the is Celtus. You know. So yeah, the Celtus and Celtus Queen are so fun, and she, I never thought about it, but we were just standing back and watching them because it's so funny. And the Celtus grabs onto the Celtus Queen and he like yeah. picks her up and he starts moving and she's like, it's a UFO catcher. I'm like, I never thought about that because it's got like the claw, the big claws. Yeah. It looks like he's going down for the prize. It's, it was the cutest thing. And we had such a good time against those. It's such a fun fight. Yeah. I, I love the synergy between those. I two. love Celtus and the Celtus's armor actually has artillery, which is really cool. So a lot of like mm-hmm. my gunland sets would sometimes <laughs> include like I think the Celtus chest piece or the Celtus gloves to get a little bit of a artillery in there and yeah Celtus is a really really fun fight it was it was I was kind of sad when you know I found out that you can't ride Celtus in stories too I was like what do you mean I want to ride a Celtus yeah, it's like no no the, the 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 spot on top of the Celtus queen is reserved for the Celtus you can't you can't ride it exactly yeah. <laughs> And I call I call the Celtus the flying lance because it just looks like a lance that's yeah. flying and charges at you. It's so funny. 
And if he's and what is he weak to? Gunner. <laughs> like he cannot take it. He's constantly falling. And when you mount that thing as a prowler, it's so funny because it's you're like the same size. It feels like you're doing a rodeo or something. It's quite funny. And then huh? um the other fight that she enjoyed was also Durambaros. Is that the uh, one dude? Durambaros is awesome. Like we start spinning around. I <laughs> love him as well. <laughs> so, such... She's like, this guy is hilarious. I'm like, ain't it? It's such a cool concept. I guess. I guess in in stories too, they don't really show how cool Durambaros can be because he never really does like the full. Or does he actually? I've never seen his uh, his kinship attack, so I don't actually know. But I was just thinking, like, she was probably already mm. exposed to Durambros in stories, too. And it was maybe not that special. But then you see him in GU, and he's just like, I'm going to spin around and spin around and yeet myself into the air. It's really cool. It's so great. So, and jo- Devil Joe was fun because she could finally enjoy Devil Joe, who feels like a real monster in that game. I really don't like what they did to him in World. Like, he, I mean, he was fun for what he was, but not... Fun is a double Joe fight? I don't think so. And she hasn't, she has not faced Savage Double Joe in G rank oh yet. I'm God. looking forward to that because, like, that is he is such a monster and he commands presence and he's he's huge and he's fast and aggressive and he's no pushover. But the thing is, she's commenting, she's like, these monsters are really fast. I'm yep. just like, you have not seen uh, Hyper Silver. And hyper gold yet. Oh my you god! Poor sweet no. summer child. No! Oh my god! There that's was so one. Bad. There was oh the the other hunt. The other hunt that she said nope to. There was there's two hunts. One was the the final end of Diablos, which I finished. To her credit, she only let me. She had me finish only like the last minute of the hunt. She had it. She did the rest. The one hunt though that she's just like, I'm just not in the mood for this now. She's like, this has got to be a, pro- a programming mistake was the G rank bear uh He hits so hard oh, in G rank yeah. that it, it almost feels like they misprogrammed it. Like did is he is he supposed to be this powerful? Like he hits like a truck. Yeah. It's like so sh- those those monsters to me was always like I'd go in there with Alchemy Gunlance and then I'd be like, okay, this monster's kicking my ass. All right, no, it's fine. It's fine. Let me just go away. Swap into Adept Sword and Shield. And now let's have a little conversation and just like beat the crap out of everything. That was like my solution whenever Alchemy Gunlance wasn't working because Gunlance is extremely underpowered in that game. You grab the sword and shield, which is just so mm, sword and shield is chef's kiss straight up in that game. It feels so good. We had another really funny thing happen yesterday, which which we were just laughing about, which was, what was that? I think it was a Kongalala. Getting in, the, getting in the way as we were fighting another. I can't remember what the other monster was, but it was hilarious. And I was like, "I'm gonna dung bomb it." She's like, "No, don't do it. This is I love the mayhem." Well, she likes it. She, she like I've said before, she hates tedious like repetitive tasks. Yeah. So she hates mining for ores. She hates leveling up. She hates that stuff. She won't do it. So she generally makes me do it. And she says, "I'll give you a, I'll I'll give you a, a shoulder massage or something if you do it for me because I don't want to do it." And so she'll like you know pound on my shoulders like bum 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 bum. I'm like thanks, um, but she she doesn't mind doing repetitive stuff that feels different every time, which is why she can do 400 all mothers and stuff like that. Is because when it's unexpected crazy stuff happens, that's what she finds the most fun, which I can respect. That that is uh, th- that hits so close to home because like I remember in World when I was streaming world and I would never use dung bombs and people would assume that I was a noob and I was dumb and I didn't know that you could use dung bombs. And they come in like, Oh, you do know that you can use dung bombs. And I'm like, (laughs) yeah, I can also watch these monsters destroy everything and just see how fun it is for them to hit each other or hit me or (laughs) like what happens. The, the randomness. And and it almost became like a, a thing in, in, in the community where we'd be like, I mean, you, you carry, poop next to your like your potions that that that's the thing to do you carry poop next to your why would you do that <laughs> like, who does that oh we had a, we had a we had a really good save i think we were going up against a uh, royal ludroth yuna was really low in health it toppled over and then a huge gold crown plesioth it had to be gold crown came in and decided to do like a supercharge at us and she was gonna die because she was like ko'd but it, it ended up getting blocked by the body of the Royal Ludroth. And she's like, it saved me. 
<laughs> and and she hates him. Fun. Look, Royal Ludroth <laughs> saved her, and she still doesn't like him. Well, then oh. then she went in the background. And she's like, kick his ass, and she's watching Plessia like do uh, like side sweeps and stuff. <laughs> I'm like, I don't know how much damage he actually does. He does some, it, but not a lot. It, it, they don't do much it's, in it's, in GU. It's not like a turf four or anything like no. that. So, and she she's got to have she's got to experience all the fun old school Monster Hunter isms like getting completely knocked out of the arena and having to get back in only to get knocked out again. She, she had that several times. Um, she finds that hilarious. She doesn't mind the loading zones at all. She doesn't mind the flex animation at all. Um, she even has the experience of every time you place a trap, the monster runs away to another area. It's like all the classic stuff. Yeah, it's, it's so, one of those it's things. It's been a really good time. So I take back what I said about you know, yeah, I actually think now the experience of doing World or Rise or both allows you to get over the hump easier because you already know the basics of the game loop that you don't you're not hung up trying to swallow too much at once. It's it's uh, an interesting follow up to the episode that we did last where we we're talking about Hey J with Hey J about him doing GU and stuff yeah. and uh it's it's funny to see that it actually goes kind of a little bit the other way when it comes at least when it comes wrong. to units. It's not it's not going to be the same thing for everyone though. It is important to mention because yeah, yeah, yeah. some people hear this and be like, "Hey, you know what? I'm probably going to love you." There's a good chance that you will. There's also a chance yeah. that you might not because I've yeah, seen keeping... I've seen the feedback go both ways when it comes to that stuff and and at least in my comment yeah. sections where people be like some people went to GU after World and they're like, dude, I love GU so much more than World. Like, I, I adore this game. There's so much content. I can play this thing forever. And then there's other people that are like, I don't understand how you can enjoy playing this after World. This is impossible. This is terrible. Why would you yeah. ever go back? And it's like, it, it's both things. And, you know, to, to me personally, yeah, we, are, I, we are talking about Yuna, though. Yeah. To, to, to me personally, I enjoy both styles. Like, like I like we even talked about when it comes to specifically the map loading screens, the, the different loading zones, they just give you the illusion that the map is so much bigger than what it actually is that I also find interesting from an immersion standpoint and whatnot. And yeah, the, the, there's, the thing is there's also so much to learn when it comes to weapons because like in that game, I play literally two weapons. Like I've experimented with other ones, but I, you know, in order, if I want to do okay in a hunt, I'll play two weapons, and that's either the gun lance or the sword and shield, and nothing else. <laughs> I'll play different styles with them and whatnot, but like those are the two weapons that I will take onto a hunt because anything else, and I'll get destroyed probably. <laughs> but yeah, we're we're having a really good time, so uh, I'm excited that uh, she likes it. Uh, there's so many cool hunts that she hasn't done yet. Uh, she really, she also really liked Rise X. Or, well, he's not called Rise X. Astalos. See, I'm thinking in Japanese. Dang it. Um, she like she really liked him. Um, but she loves Gameth, of course, and she prefers the world versions of pretty much all the monsters. But she really did did enjoy um, uh, Mizutsune in this version as well, because it's she's like it just moves so fast. It's it's more difficult. It doesn't mm -hmm. move that fast in Rise. It's much easier to deal with. Um, and it's just a different way of being able to enjoy the monster. So it'll be fun to get her feedback when she faces up against the deviants. Like if she likes Astalos, wait until she sees an Astalos that has a friggin' lightsaber in its forehead. I, I, <laughs> I think she'll love it. I think she'll love it. But I don't think she'll like the grind so much. Yeah, the the grind if, the grind uh, of deviants is a big problem. Yes. I find. It's, yeah. They didn't need to be as grindy as they are. That that's one of the things that so, keeps me from from going back yeah. and, and doing them. So my goal here with her now is the new deviants that they added were much better. They were done much better, in that there's only five quests versus like fifteen. So the idea is I want to get her hooked on using. I want to get her hooked on one of them, and we'll just do that monster. So I think Soul Seer will probably be it. Be it. Yeah. So I think we'll do Soul Seer and then like get. Get it all the way up to like EX or something. It'd be fun. Soul Seer will be an interesting one because of like the the bubbles mechanic and whatnot. It's it's really really cool. That that EX hunt uh, was it EX? Hunt? No, the the one before it. No, no, the EX hunt was yeah. That's the one where it's the Amatsu map and it's, you've got the regular one and then you you fight the big boy and it's like it's it's fun. 
But yeah, I, I, I but really, they, I, I almost time. wish they they went back and patched it so that uh, everyone could get like the the progression, at least just that, so that everyone could get the progression from the deviant. Like that would be enough. Because yeah. for those for those of you that don't know, the way that it works with deviants is kind of like old school urgent quests almost. Urgent so quests, like, yeah. So like you have, imagine you have three players, which was my case, and it's like if you want to advance to the next quest. Only one person advances at a time, and that's the host. Whoever hosts the quest advances the quest, and everybody else You know else what it reminds me of? It's like the Guiding Lands. So imagine if you go into the Guiding Lands, and it only levels up the Guiding Lands for the host. So you go in there, and you do yeah. the volcano area, and it goes from level 1 to 2 to 3 to 4 to 5, star, whatever. And then when you go to yours, it's still one level 1. Yeah. And that's because everything you did only counted for the host, which sucked. It, it it is kind of like weird and at one point i wanted to go and do all of it and i even wanted to stream all of it but then i realized very quickly as we were going through silver wing Narga, Kruger, it, it's not even the hours because i don't mind the hours it was just it's just not fun for people to watch me do the same hunt three times over times over 15 over so that all of us can get the progress it's terrible it's like nobody wants to watch this it's like let yeah. us go kill silver wing nargakuga three times that's level one now let's do this 14 more times it's like no it's just not fun yeah, so i mean once we get done with the podcast we'll probably start playing but there's there's certain things that i can't wait for her to experience like i i've told her how how epic the the g rank a cantor is in that it's so funny that no matter where I'm playing, whether it's the Japanese version or the Western version, doesn't matter. You drop in that hunt, and there's always someone who dies on the first stupid little charge. The canter just goes ba 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 ba, and it's like it's so. It's not even a surprise. You, it's like, hey, I'm a big truck coming your way, and you have 15 seconds to move, and yet one or two people die every single time. It's like they think they could tank it or something. I don't know, and I'm just like. You don't tank the big cat. I don't know why I call it a cat, but to me it's a cat. So um, I mean, technically speaking, just... he is a flying wyvern. <laughs> <laughs> She's, she saw a Tigrex jump up and fly to another area, and she's like, wait, what? <laughs> it flies? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it, has, it does have wings. <laughs> it is a flying wyvern. It, Mom, it, <laughs> mind blown, you know. The classification on some of the flying wyverns is weird. A cantor probably being chief among them is like, I was. <laughs> oh, yeah. I've heard it has something to do with the evolution or whatever. Didn't, didn't we talk about this what? with either yeah, Kogath yeah, yeah. or. With Bandino, Bandino or something? Yeah. yeah, we talked about this in the show. There's actually a reason behind it, guys. It's not just random. There's yeah, yeah, yeah. some logic behind it. You can go back and watch one of the lore episodes and <laughs> you'll figure that stuff out. But yeah. But yeah, that's my that's what I've been up to is the adventures and Monster Hunter Double Cross. And then um I was happy to to buy the game again, uh, for what feels like the sixth time I've bought in the game. Uh, was it uh so was it at least like, discounted? Because that game is discounted. It so... wasn't. It was oh, it's the discounted unlucky. so often, but this time it wasn't. I was like, you know what? I don't care. But but uh, yeah, the, it was like for, it was like forty bucks or something. For anyone who's considering and you're like, oh man, forty bucks pretty steep, like keep keep it your eye on the eShop because that thing goes on sale literally all the time. It's like you, but it's, you it's constantly worth the 40 see bucks. it. It's it's worth the forty bucks, but it's like you know, not everybody's got there's different budgets, there's yeah, yeah. pandemics, there's all so just wait and we guarantee that like in eventually it'll be like nineteen bones. It always goes yeah. down to nineteen ninety nine. Like I see that all or just buy it used if you don't mind physical. Yeah. But at this point for the switch I don't We've got Rise in there. I don't want to, swapping out games is not something we want to do. So um, we just buying everything digital now. And then she has stopped playing Monster Hunter Stories two for the time being. She will start back up once Call of Taroth comes. Did she? But I think she stopped because she hates the second floor of the Elder Layer that much. She wow. Hates the break because it's it feels tedious. It's laborious. It's break five backs, break seven faces cut seven tails and she's just like okay, yeah that's this is stupid that stuff is pretty boring that like and immediately that, she's like i don't want to do this she's like the, if you do it for me i'll continue of, playing but i don't want to do it the, the breaking of parts and even just like the the tasks that you have to do especially because you're supposed to do the elders layer twice i haven't even finished the second time i'm assuming she finished the oh, first yeah. time at least 
right? She finished the first time, Elder's Lair? Yes, or no? she did. Okay. Yeah, 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 so, she did. I ha- I helped her do the second break floor. I did all of it for her. Yeah. Because she was just like, I can't do this. I'm. She's like, I'm falling. I'm literally falling asleep. I cannot do this. I'm like, I've, um, the the way that the the way that I've been playing recently is like I've done that. The, there's the elder chain near the end that you can do. I mean, not near the end, but it's it's like after you you beat the game and you get into high rank. There's an elder. Did you, did you not know about this either? The elder ch- quest Wait. chain starts with Karen. I mean, I know there, there's a deviant chain. I yes, didn't know there was and an elder there's chain. a there's a separate chain which is an elder wait, chain. Wait, 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 <laughs> dude, tell. <laughs> it's so it because these dude, things tell. are so hidden. So there's a uh, there's an NPC. They did it. Okay, I'll say this. Yeah, stories two, unbelievable game. Probably one of my games of the year. But man, they do not explain what to do when you hit endgame. When you they hit literally end just game, say, yeah. "Okay," and there's so much to do, but they don't tell you anything. It's like. Could you just point the player a little bit, hey, please? But but hey, listen, listen. If if you are lost, if you just finished stories two and you're lost, I made this video right okay. before I went on vacation. It's like a forty minute video tells oh, really? you everything yeah. you should be doing in the About end game. <laughs> okay, tell me, tell me, tell me now. What's what's this elder? Chain? So at some point, uh, this is even before you finish the game. There's a quest that is given to you by the um, the or. Uh, the or appraiser, I think, in Lelution. And she gives you a quest where you're supposed to go to these ruins out in the desert, these Aramon ruins, and you are you just find shinies. And you find a bunch of shinies yeah. that are there, and then you bring them back to her. And she's like, oh, this is great, whatever. And then that quest ends if you haven't finished the game yet. However, if you finish the game, she gives you a follow-up quest and tells you, oh, you know, these tracks are like of a, a a creature or some kind. Of, I think, I don't know if she immediately refers Kieran or not, but it's Kieran. There's something about Kieran in the fragments that you find. And she tells you to go to the Scrivener's Lodge. And then you go to the Scrivener's Lodge, you talk to Lilia. And uh, she then sends you to like Pomore Garden to look for uh, tracks for Kieran. And then you keep doing that quest, and it goes through all of the Elder Dragons. So there's a quest chain what? for all of the Deviants, and there's a quest chain for all of the Elder Dragons. And this is all single-player content, so you don't have to go into any of the multiplayer oh, wow. stuff at all. And special shout-out to Rage Gaming, because I was not aware which quest was what, and I actually looked into his video because he had a video where he details all of this stuff. <laughs> well, the the bad thing is now I'm at the point of the game where I can insta kill all oh, the yeah. other dragons. I just I just psh, and they're all they're no, like, I, oh. I don't think you can do that in the quest. I'm not sure, okay, but because like I was I was pretty high level when I did. I was because I actually did it last week. Uh, you know, okay. when, and uh, I don't remember actually one shotting any of them. So I think you have to fight them. Well, that's good. That'll be fun. Okay, cool. I did not know. That's really good. To yeah, know. there's. I assume that they're high rank, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. All of them are high rank. There's no no low rank okay. in that stuff. And I'll you tell go you one thing. You, well, do, you, you do all yeah. of them, and I don't remember what exactly the. Oh yeah, the the reward. It, it's not necessarily like. Uh, I think you get some bottle caps and whatnot along the way, but the thing is, it unlocks. Uh, quests for elder dragons and like you know how you can do the multiplayer yeah, if you, quests. Yeah, you want to farm them. You can just yeah. go farm them the, the same way that when you do the deviant quest line, it unlocks the deviant so that you can go farm them as well. So that's kind of like how yeah. you unlock that stuff. That's cool. I I should do that because I've been doing a lot of sub quests now and I've been just hunting for monsters and and fine tuning and just having fun messing around and. Hoping to finally get that darn. There's a subquest where it's like, okay, complete eighty percent of the monsterpedia, and I'm at like seventy eight or seventy nine right now. I'm like, I my monsterpedia is more doing. complete than yours. No wait, monster or monsterpedia, monsterpedia uh, or monsterpedia, monsterpedia. Okay, yeah, Monst- mine is mine is more I complete. Think. I'm winning. <laughs> I think. But I here's 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 the thing. I'll tell you right now. Probably one of the ones that you're missing is Emerald Congalala. <laughs> Yeah, I don't think I've ever saw him. <laughs> or if I saw him, I just skipped him. Yeah, exactly. That's the problem with Narga. You end up skipping everything. You're just like, I don't need to fight him. Yeah, N- Narga. I just want the egg and get out. Narga is is too good in that game. I feel like the stealth ability is too strong. Because like, I'm whenever I go on a on like a one of those multiplayer expeditions, right? That you're doing to get yeah. eggs and whatnot. 
It's like oh, you but, have to use it. If you don't use Narga, you, and, and I've had this talk, and I, 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 I mean, even if you're doing solo though, like it's like it's just that much of an advantage. And I've had this discussion on Twitter. People tell me, no, you take a you take a roar monster. A good friend of mine, fighting cowboy, was telling me, just take a roar monster. It's way better. And I'm like, no, you don't understand how fast Narga Kuga moves. Like you know, like in the time it takes you to roar, I'll spin around you five times and still be catching eggs. Okay, <laughs> the time it takes you, you to press me of the Yuna. roar. You know what? Yuna uses uh, Mizutsune, and she does like the the super dash with it, the soap dash. And she's yeah. so good at it that she can she can beat me when I'm using Narga, and she can avoid wow. all the monsters. And she starts like humming along that song, uh, the um, Deja Vu, the drifting song. Deja Vu. She's so good at it too. And so I'll give it. There's some people who are really good at navigating the 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 running monsters. Okay. But in general, I, the problem with that game design is that you can't run from battles when you're in the co-op dungeons. Yeah. Which means anytime you run to a monster, it's going to be, and you can't use three times speed, only two times two. It just, it's a drag. And I really wish yeah. they would change that. Um, but it's a great game. I'm, I love it. Uh, it's just, yeah, there's a few things that they could have did a little bit better at the end game. But uh, I'm looking forward to our rematch. It was fun to see that people enjoyed seeing are two we, those weren't even we just randomly hey let's play yeah and uh, you mind if i record yeah go for it whatever i've never done pvp yet yeah let's do it and you whooped me and uh i'm looking forward I, to i don't the think next time we play i don't think it was that black and white because like some people are saying that too oh like oh man you know gajin gajin doesn't really care about pvp and i'm like did, did you actually watch those matches appropriately? Like, did you see when I was winning head to heads and like my health would go down by like a million? And I'd be like, that didn't feel like a win. <laughs> it's like someone wow. hits you in the face with a baseball bat and they say, you win. And I was like, no, I didn't. <laughs> I didn't win oh, anything. <laughs> Don't worry. I'm not that type of like, you know, like, have you ever played Magic the Gathering? Oh, yes. I used to be really into Magic the Gathering. So, you know, like, there's those people who, who will actually use, like, I, I, okay, the exact so I'm counter. Get in the com- I'm going to get, I'm, I'm going to get hates in the comment section here, but they, they put in counters for different decks inside the side deck. Yeah. And then they'll be like, oh, you're playing with all white monsters. I'm just going to put in all these incredibly anti white monster cards. And it's just yeah. like, what the heck's the fun of that? Like, that's just yeah. dumb. So, like, the fact that I know your monsters. I'm not gonna be. Do I'm you not gonna though? build a. Yeah, I know. <laughs> I'm not. I'm not gonna build a deck or of, of monsters that are meant to anti your monsters. That's yeah, just like, not fun. It, it'd be real easy That's, to. I'm like, not that type of guy. To, to nerf me, it'd be real easy. Just get like anti blast blight. <laughs> yeah, boom. <laughs> I'm not that type of person, so I wouldn't do it. We yeah, go I'd, in there as a slugfest. It's gonna be fun. I just, I just like that I, being said I really wish they would cut the amount of of uh knives that you get in that one item set I think as I was watching a bunch of videos online and it's just people throwing para and sleep knives for the for half the fight and it's just really like, they really should have reduced I mean because I mean I guess you could build for it and just be like yeah I got my anti sleep anti para anti this monster yeah. it's like is that fun though like I kind of enjoy like just trying to read the other player like poker and just like yeah but like i might just i, I might know. just i think we might just even agree let's just not I'm even just not use that set because because like that yeah. set that set i don't even think it's that much fun because i think it's much more interesting to use the monster like i use that set because i was like well i can throw knives and i can put traps down yeah, yeah. oh it's <laughs> here's, fun the first few times yeah. here's the really here's the really fun thing you remember how <laughs> people called this i was like oh no you remember how i was trying to trap your Teostra. And we I think oh, yeah, both I of us time. were like, why doesn't that work? Why didn't my trap work? It was a power attack. And then people in the comments are like, look at Rurikon trying to trap Elder Monster. It didn't even click in my head. That's an Elder Monster, you idiot. You absolute idiot. Uh, it it didn't click for me either because I didn't think that they gave the monsters I know why, but I mean, like, I wouldn't think that they would give them such an advantage over the other yeah. monsters in a PvP setting, because that is a very unfair advantage, in my opinion. Yeah, it, it, I guess traps I guess that's are the... supposed to be a big thing in in the game. It's like, well, that really just defeats the whole like 
that's that's a, that's a counter. That's yeah. a counter to that item set. And I just I don't like that type of counterplay. It's just okay. I brought the right deck, and I'm gonna wipe you now. It's like no. It's it's, it's it, it all comes down to the last draw, like Yu-Gi-Oh! Destiny draw, baby. Like it's 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 one know. of those things where you know how when you have uh, a fighting game, like you look at Dragon Ball Fighter Z, and I don't know how much you know about you know Dragon Ball story, but you Nothing. know in the in there you have like Krillin facing off against Beerus, who is a a god, and and Krillin is just like this mere mortal, and it's balanced because it's a fighting game, right? So when it comes yeah. to you know, the stories too, you don't expect the same level balance because obviously some monsters are supposed to be more powerful than others. But I do feel that on some situations, it's like, you know, I like Basel Geese. So I make Basel Geese and I play Basel Geese. But at the end of the day, if you really want to do the play style that you do with Basel Geese, but better, you just get a Teostra. Like, that's it. Yeah, and I... I <laughs> and, yeah, and, uh -huh. here, and it's easier to build a Teostra than a Basel Geese, because Basel Geese is speed fire and Teostra is power fire. So it's like, it's, it's just way better. Like, okay. Like, I, I made a, a full bingo Uragon and, like, I wasn't even trying. Because it was, it was, it's power fire and power fire is super easy to just, like, get whatever you want to get, like, a full bingo. Whereas speed fire, there's, like, literally three spells that you can put on there and that's it. There's nothing else. Yeah. So I think the extent of my PvP is going to be against you and Yuna, and that's about it, probably. And eventually I will challenge Arix, but the thing is, is, like, I just, I don't want to build monsters for PvP. Like, I just, I don't get interested in that kind of stuff. I, it needs to feel like I'm having fun co-op shenanigans. Yeah. So, and I think that's what we, we had when we fought. It was fun. So Yeah, that's that's the that way that Yuna I... bad-mouthing me from behind and hoping <laughs> that I lose was fun. Yeah, I, I, I hope that next match Yuna is there to, to support me again because that's why I won. She was, she was like, she was throwing down your game. <laughs> she, well, just... she, she wants to face you, so that'll oh. be a fun one. <laughs> yeah. She's like, I want to fight him too. I'm like, you'll, you'll get that's your chance, don't worry. That sounds good to me. <laughs> <laughs> it's um but but it is definitely one of those things where it's like the the monsties that I that I want to bring into into PvP fights are like the same monsters that I use in in PvE so it's like they all of those monsters that I use they're all a part of my main team right now so like the silver yeah. wind I the silver wind's what I use to navigate the the mm. the dens and whatnot because it's super easy the loggy's my main power monster and uh, Basel is my main speed monster. Even though, see, that that's the part that really frustrates me when I'm doing dens, is like, I want to have Basel here, but I can't. Because I have to bring yeah. Silver, Silver Wind. And I, what I kills you, me is, I'm, I know you were just teasing me, but I made a tweet saying like, oh, I'm farming tons of Nergi comes in. She's like, she sees a my, my, my hatch with like it's a bunch of Nergi eggs, and she's like, what the hell are you up to? What are you doing? It's like she caught me red-handed doing something. I'm, like, <laughs> I'm just looking. I'm just farming for some skills, man. The thing is, it's like I didn't. I don't watch PvP focused videos. Oh, me neither. Because I just don't. I don't play PvP, right? But it just seemed really funny because I did not know Nergigante is like a meta thing. And so you're like, oh, it's so mainstream of you, man. And then like a few hours later, two six nine, because him in Paradise. Uh, they've been making a bunch of really oh, neat yeah. PvP videos. So if you're interested in the PvP build, like they are a great place to go to. Uh, they've got tons of ideas. And he puts out like a Nergigante's broken build. Check this out. I'm like, no, this is not what I'm making. I swear to God. <laughs> I just at the timing was horrible. I mean, I'm just like, no, I, mean, I, I just want to have a non-element team. I had Teosha last time and it's like, come on, I use White Diablos and Bloodbath. I need to have another non-elemental. I can't just have an element sitting there. He, it's just my OCD just says no. I, they have to all be non-elemental. So mm -hmm. that's what it's going to be. The the cool thing about um, Ner, Ner Gigante is that I myself uh, have been farming a little bit of Ner Gigantes because I'm also grabbing. Uh, I mean, Calamity Slash is just such a good ability for non-elemental monsters. It's fantastic. So. I've been putting yeah. Calamity Slash on all kinds of things. <laughs> like, if it's a yeah. non-elemental monster in my roster, it probably has Calamity Slash. <laughs> it's a pretty good attack. And I, I've, I've actually made two non-elemental monsters that I've been curious about. It. It's weird, though, because, like, I don't want to tell you all the things that I did to this one monster, but let's just say I, 
I stacked so many things on top of it that I feel like this monster, when it hits in a certain condition, like the other monster should be reduced to ash. And then I just see the damage and I'm like, that's it. <laughs> that's all you can do. Do you understand the amount of things I stacked on you? And you do this to me. It's so weird. I don't understand. Like, I guess I, I'm, I'm probably doing something wrong, but it feels weird that I stacked so many things onto this one monster. And then the, the exact reason why all these things are stacked comes together to proc all of the things. And it's like 900 damage on a crit when the other monster was lying down. And I'm like, what do you mean? <laughs> What's this? 900. Come on, man. I can do better. I'll tell you one thing, though, you're going to be very happy to hear is I think, and I could be wrong because I'm not a competitive player, but I think Gunlance is broken strong for people oh, yeah. in stories, too. I, I think it's. I've been using Gunlance really just, I think in general, though, it's a really powerful weapon. Like, yeah. It's really good. I, I meme on it it's a lot fun. because it has really low damage. But the ability to manage your kinship gauge the way that you do with the gun lance is insane. It's because, like, it, put it like this my gauge is at like what, uh, let's say 15 points or whatever. If I get five shells, I'll make it max in one head to head. It's crazy. It's like I got, one head to head. I boom, got a max. really fun, I got a really fun, uh, I wanted, I wasn't about to say deco, but uh, charm. The other day, I keep messing that up. <laughs> um, it was what was it? It was capacity XL, so like I have a high chance of remaining your shells, and it had guard heal XL. I'm like, wow! Oh yeah, my god! I have god. a lot of really good. There's a bunch of really good god char uh, charms I've got in the. Game. I have like, um, whoa! I have the reloading XL with uh, kinship M. I think that's like my best MO. charm right now. So it's it's not great. Because, you know, the other one's just M, but I love yeah. capacity. Capacity's so good. It's like, oh, look, another shell. Did you, I, didn't, great. I don't know if you've gotten one, but there's, you know how you have the red rarity, the rarity six, I think, whatever, for the the decorations? There's, it's you possible mean the charms? to get the, the uh, <laughs> God damn it. yes, the charm, sorry, talismans, whatever. So yes, the I'm going to keep making a mistake this my, my entire life. Um. Why? It's, I don't it's, know why it's I fine. It. Don't worry about it. Uh, I'm sure everyone can understand. <laughs> I think the problem is, is in my head. I think I the Japanese word omamori comes into mind, right? And omamori, if I was to describe it, it would be it would be like a charm that you buy at a shrine. Yeah, it's like like a little necklace or whatever. And so, like, I don't think of it as a decoration. I think of it as a charm because it's supposed to have special properties that help to protect you. And so, in my head, I auto translate it to charm. Or deck. I don't know why. I don't know. I'm just. I can't even re realize why my brain's all wired weird. This is the joy of becoming 40 years old. Okay. <laughs> um, your brain messes I up. So anyways, I look forward to that. <laughs> so you get your rarity six charms, which are red colored, right? It is yeah. possible to get a rarity higher, which is at like turquoise blue, which is rarity seven. They exist in the game. I don't know if you've gotten one. I I don't know. I don't pay that. I don't even pay that so much attention I, to the colors. I just look at the skills and I'm like, this looks good. So look I I did I did deco farming for about. Not, uh, see, I'm there. Me go again. <laughs> I didn't even I say did anything. Charm farming. <laughs> I did charm farming for probably I'd say six hours. Because you see, unlike my daughter, I love mindless tasks. It it's yeah. meditative for me. I like it. So I was farming the living heck out of them, and I have. Out of like hundreds and hundreds of these decorations, and I had to sell a bunch. I have five. That's it of this rarity. They're that rare. They're like incredibly rare. But the one I do have is so crazy. It's weak weak point XL. Oh no! So if I hit, if I use the right weapon against yep. the right point, it does a ton of damage, and it has kinship gauge increase XL. So it increases the rate in which my kinship goes up by XL as well. I'm just like. It's like this thing's insane. That's like playing Gunlance, but with any weapon. <laughs> yeah, basically. So I'm like, damn. So like, when I see the fact that they, I don't, because you can't, I'm, they're they're really rare to get that rarity. But it's really interesting that they decided to implement it. Rarity seven, like that's I wonder, just crazy. I wonder how weak point works in PvP because you can't like target the head or the tail or 
and you just target probably the doesn't monster. work at all. Yeah. So I, I don't know. I yeah. don't know, but I figure, you know, with the upcoming DLC, I think they're going to make the monsters pretty hard or they're going to pay off some good stuff because I there's some really good stuff hidden in the game, some gems. So, you know what I dream of, though? Can you imagine if they release, like, a G-Rank for the game? Oh. That is crazy. It'll never ha- It won't happen like that. I, I, I highly I highly doubt it would happen. I I. I they didn't. They sold like a, a million copies in what was it? The first week or the second week or whatever it was, right? A million. Yeah, copies? they're at three million now, which oh. is like I think they're three, and which is like well above what they were expecting to sell. Yeah. So that's great. That means that I think we is it a th- hang on. Let me double check. I don't want to be misquoting stuff on. Yeah, but that like podcast. three hang million on. for stories too, and I know that some people are like well didn't rise sell like. Wait, was it Rise that sold ten? Rise, no, Rise sold like Stories seven. One sold like three hundred thousand. Okay, yeah, like, exactly. Got to realize. So, so it's like yeah, three don't... million for Stories Two is amazing, and it's it definitely crazy. shows. And it, here's here's the thing: I know that I meme on you know the Pokemon thing a lot, but I think I genuinely think because I I say this about all games, I genuinely think that this is a really good thing for Pokemon. You know, for people that like Pokemon. The fact that Stories 2 is as successful as it is could potentially force, you know, Game Freak or even just Nintendo to just, hey, guys, look look at what these guys are doing over here. Look at how amazing this game is doing. Look at how much people are enjoying it. Why can't you guys just, like, do your thing good, too? (laughs) Can you just, like, make it better, right? And I I think that potentially... uh, Maybe not in the next Pokemon games, because I think that those have been in the works for a while, right? And they're going to be either releasing soon or they've already released. I don't really follow Pokemon yeah. stuff. But I think that the next Pokemon games after these ones, you know, because they're going to be, people are going to be comparing it to Stories 2 to some extent. They're going to have to yeah. do better because they have competition now. They're not just like the only ones on the block. So I think this is a good thing. I always see competition as like a very good thing. Like we talked about, you know, with Xbox doing good, hopefully Sony can do better as well and vice versa. And yeah. Well, let's not talk about Sony though. Cause you know, <laughs> okay, I might be wrong. Bad things might, might really happen. <laughs> okay. I think I might be wrong. Cause I, okay. I don't know where I read it, but I know that they, they sold through over a million, which yeah, yeah. is really good. And Over- I think Monster Hunter Rise, I remember reading somewhere that it hit I think it was seven like seven. Million. Yeah, I, I remember reading yeah, seven which is, for Rise which is well. real. I mean, that's single platform. Are you kidding me? Yeah. That's really good. It's real. And, so, and uh, it's going gonna, it's gonna to increase more when it comes out on PC next year. So that's yeah. going to be good, too. It's going to be freaking I just wild. hope Story 2 sells more. That It's just... It breaks my heart that that game won't be for everybody or they just won't try it because they don't know it's going to the- be for them. It's such a good game. And it, it's like, I, I it, always, it is a hop of hot chocolate. It yeah. really is one of those most feel good, comfy games I've ever played. I always tell people I love that art style, and it it, it hurts me so much. There's a lot of people who won't even try it because of the art style, because they're not into it at all. And I understand, you know, it's like if you don't like yeah. what is what is showing, it, it. if you're not if you don't like what's showing on screen, it could be the best game in the world. If it looks bad to you, you're like, I can't, I can't get into yeah, it. Yeah, it's right? like black and white films and stuff, right? There's some yeah. amazing ones, but if you just can't get over it, you just can't like this. It's just yeah. unfortunate, but it's, it's, it's such a, it's, it's such a fantastic game. Cause like I keep going back to it and I'll be like, Oh, let me, let me go do uh, an expedition. Then get a couple of more eggs. The one thing that's been bothering me is having to level. Cause like, I love doing the bingos, right? Like I love doing yeah. planning out the build, which by the way, there's actually an app now. I don't know if you know this, there's an app, at least on Android. I don't know if it's on Apple. It's called, Monster Hunter Stories 2 Guide. It's got like ads and all kinds of other stuff on there, but it's got a bingo planner. You can actually plan out the bingo for your mom, which is something that I've been looking to for. I was planning out bingos and like spreadsheets and trying to like. Very cut. It's a three by three grid, man. It's not that complicated. It is. Cause like, listen, you, you have to think about it like this, right? If you put something in a corner, 
there's potential there for three bingos. If you put something outside of a corner, there's only potential for two bingos. And you got to optimize that stuff to get as many bingos as you possibly can. That is it's, true. There, there is an optimal just, placement. It, it's not just like, uh, oh, it's a three on top, a three on middle, and a three on bottom. There's also the crosses, man. It's like, no. Well, then you would, you would be very upset by a video I saw the other day. A Japanese YouTuber did a lot of work and did a lot of math and a lot of testing on whether it's more powerful to do full bingos or to do half bingos, like uh, less bingos, but having the two skills. There's one skill that makes it so that when you command an attack, um, it costs less kinship to do it. Yeah. And there's also one that says when you command attack, it will ex it will use more kinship gauge in order to do more damage. And they negate each other. So the one will raise the cost and the other one will delete the cost back to normal so it doesn't change at all. And they found that that is more powerful to use those two than to do full bingos. Except for two cases, which is a dragon or a water type. Because one of those two skills, I think like it's the one where um, when you give the instruction, there's a wa it's a water. So you can actually squeeze out one extra bingo when you use it. Um, and the other one, I think, is uh, dragon. So you can do it. But in all of the cases, once you're over like 500 something, it's, it's like, we're talking like level 90 plus, okay? Oh, okay. Um, up until that up until that point, and, full bingo is by far the best. And, and but here's once the, you get to like level 90 over, which doesn't matter at that point, then that takes over as the better. And we're talking like crazy meta stuff here. So I personally, like you, I like to see the bingos but it, a lot. The, the question becomes, okay, so it's more powerful by how much? Like significantly more powerful, or just like ah, it'll do like three more damage. <laughs> uh, enough for min maxers to care, but not enough for most of us to care yeah. about, for sure. Yeah, I mean, but if so, you're, here's I the don't thing. think I think you. If if you're really a min maxer, then you got to make sure that when you pick up your egg, if it's a fire monster, it needs to come with fire attack three times. I don't even know if it can do that. <laughs> <laughs> but it I needs to come know. with fire so that you get plus nine fire attack. It's like, no, I'm not min-maxing that hard. Like, I'm, I'm not what even I'm just using... What I'm excited for is... Go ahead. Oh, sorry. Go ahead. No, you go. I was going to say, in August 6th, in three days, they're going to be releasing the full strategy guide for the game here in Japan. I was disappointed by the Rise strategy guide, but that's also because the game was already so transparent with a lot of the stuff. And the stuff that it wasn't, it didn't really clarify in the strategy guide like I wanted it to, so I really didn't get much content out of it. But I'm looking forward to this because I'm hoping that it has some raw numbers. So it tells us by how much, because that info is out there. Like users are testing it, right? And then they know. But to have it all there as a guide would be very nice. Mm hmm. So I'm hoping there's some interesting little tidbits that I could share on Twitter and stuff to help people out from that guidebook. That would be fun. Yeah. But yeah, the game is not that hard. It's 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 comfortably fun. So Yeah, it's uh it's 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 just something that you can have fun. The the thing like I like I was saying earlier is that the thing that bothers me is is like I love making the bingos. Um that part is extremely fun to, to you know, to to think about it, to to I even do it on the phone and then I'm like, okay, now I got to go hunt these things. And the thing that bothers me is after I do the bingo and I have the skills that I want and the passes that I want in the Monsty to go and do it again, to go upgrade yeah. it twice, which a lot of the time, a lot of the times I end up not doing it. I'm like, nope, I'll just get the bingo. I'll, I'll get the monster to be the way that I want. And then if I'm eventually good. I get the other things, then sure I'll put them in. But if not, it's like, uh, like, do I want to go do uh, two ex volcanic expeditions to max out supernova on my Basel geese? Nope. Of course. <laughs> I, I really don't. <laughs> it's like, if, if I need supernova for, here's the thing. If I had, like, ideas to make two new Basel geese uh, builds that included supernova, I would not have a problem going into the volcanic dens and picking up the supernova mm. twice. But to upgrade, to upgrade the supernova on my existing Basilgis, I'm like, nah, I, I don't want to do it. <laughs> like, the build is done. I, I, I'm good. It's so funny because Yuna prods me. She was looking at my white monoblows, 
and it's got two star and everything except for one. It's a one star. She's like, the heck is that? I'm like, what? She's like, you're, you're missing a star. She's like, that's not like you. She's like, pathetic. I'm like, what? <laughs> and of course, she won't even farm for anything. And then she looks at me and she's like, wow, you just gave up looking for it? Mm-hmm. Like, you know, giving me crap. I'm just like, thanks. I was like, if I find it, I will put it on, but I cannot find the monster with it yet. Give me a break, please. Oh, man. Child. <laughs> Girl, shut up. <laughs> I get all God of War in her butt one of these days. Girl, shut up. Boy. Boy. Be better. She'd be like, she'd be like, be younger. <laughs> oh, my God. I'm go. So, I'm go grab like a fire extinguisher. See if uh, and we can take care you, of that. Have you have you been playing? Well, you've been away, but uh, we even went back and did some of the. They released the event quest in Monster Hunter Rise for Okami. Uh, I like the music was, on that one. I I did that one while I was away as well. Uh, but yeah, it's it's weird for me because I don't use a dog. It's like I really want to use the skin, but it's like I can't get rid they're, of Kayamba. They're trying to push you now. Yeah. It's like I, Kayamba and Cha Cha, they're my boys. I I can't use a dog, but I have unlocked it. I had to do the quest twice, I think. For at, at, I, I was making the same mistake that you did in in World, where you would see the requirements for the layered armor, and I saw like the two pieces. And I'm like, wait, I need eight of these things, and I have like three. What? I don't want to do that quest like fifty times, but no. Yeah, you, you then you realize it's only one. two yeah. times. Yeah, I only I had to do the quest two times, and it was fine. And it was fun going no, was back. Fun. Yeah, we, we, we had fun. We did the, that. We did a few hunts. Of course, we always went back and do some more mothers. And some all mothers. She actually ran into one of her. She ran into one of her classmates, a boy who plays. And so I joined in and we did some three player hunts. So it was really funny until he just suddenly dropped offline. I think maybe his parents caught him playing late at night or something. But uh, that was so, funny. I mean, of course, as you, you had to test his, his medal as a hunter, did he get the, uh, the Gaijin dad approval or no? It was it was not strong no. enough. No, 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 no. He was hell no. He was, <laughs> this poor kid. <laughs> this poor kid is listening to this podcast. Where I was like, oh no, I have brought shame to Gaijin. <laughs> <laughs> well, they were both taken on Crimson and they lost. I'm like, what? I was like, isn't this like his favorite monster? I was like, okay, I want in on Wait, this. So I jumped in. Crimson Fatalis. So it was Gu. No, no, Crimson Glow. Oh, Crimson Volstrex. Uh, okay. Volstrex. Uh -uh. So we jumped, I jumped in there and like what was taking them like 10 minutes, like we were, it was done in like, I don't know, like it was, it was sub 10 and it was very easy. And like, where are all these KOs coming from? I'm just like, hee 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 hee. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, yeah, flex my daddy muscles. Yeah. Uh, it's like, but he was, he was fun though. He, 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 he had a lot of fun and he was doing jokey stuff during the hunt and it was just a good time. So. I, I like hunters that are goofy. That's it's the most important aspect to have. But it, no, he he still needs to improve his skills though. Otherwise, no. Oh yeah. No. No. Approval. Well, me and Yuna have a running joke that if if she ever wants to have a partner, that they would need to be able to beat all the stages in Super Hexagon over a hundred seconds for me in order to approve. <laughs> Which I don't think would ever happen. <laughs> so you'll never approve. Like that's it. Yeah. <laughs> you she did it, but I can't. <laughs> I was like, you set the bar. And then she's like, <laughs> yeah, okay. Which is good. She hasn't displayed any interest in anything yet, which I'm very happy about. As oh, father, yeah. That terrifies me. Oh, yeah. That, well, this, she, she, she's expressed her hate of boys, though. Because the boys in her class are apparently annoying, real, really annoying, crude, disgusting... Well I mean, they're nasty at... creatures, and I'm like, that's exactly what men are. Exactly, yeah. And she's like, she's like, you're like, I was like, I'm not even a man. Just consider me an <laughs> off. I'm just a rare. I'm a rare case. I'm just. Uh, I'm, I'm not a man. Outside. I'm a father. <laughs> exactly. I'm not a man. I'm your father. <laughs> what the hell? She's like, you're a rare, rare. She she said something to me that day. It was like, you're a rare breed. I'm like, what the hell do you mean by that? She's like, there's just no other men that are sensible. Like all the other boys are absolute idiots. And you're not an idiot. How did that happen? It's the age. She's like, you know, your friends are, and your friends aren't idiots. I'm like, yeah, men are idiots. Yeah. So don't don't bother with them. <laughs> don't don't even think about it. It's fine. They're they're especially the age. Oh my god. Yeah. When I they mean, say that girls mature faster, like they ain't joking. Middle school boys are just ugh. It's obnoxious. Yeah. 
Pretty, pretty much. I, I was probably a little shit back then too. Oops. Crap. I got it. Yeah. Yeah. See. I was getting, <laughs> I was getting picked on by the little shits, and so I found I just. I just I was just the boy with all the rare magic cards and I would trade them for everybody's pizza. So I ate like a king during lunchtime in middle school, man. Cause I was a really good trader. I should have gotten into stock trading. I was like really I could walk into a magic the gathering shop and I didn't swindle people, mind you. I actually did legit good deals where I'd have like thirty kids and I would logistically find out, okay, this guy wants this card really badly. He's willing to give that card that this guy wants. So I would just start doing these like weird cross trading oh for hours. God. So I would walk into the store with like maybe two rare cards, right? And I'd walk out with 30. And they were all really good ones. I could multiply a card <laughs> o- over a span of a week just through smart trading. And then, you know, I was always generous. So I'd always give tons of extra stuff that maybe they could use for fodder for trading and stuff. And it was just. I realized I had negotiation skills. I never I never got into the trading aspect of it as much. My thing was always just the building, the building of decks. That's what I like. I'm like I, I used to have this this crazy red deck that I loved, which for people that don't know about magic, they they're probably not gonna understand this, but it was the the fling deck. Do you ever see the fling deck? The fling? Yeah, fling. I I mean I'm so old that you like I hear fling and I think chaos orb. No. It is like that old. It's like the, that, that was like unlimited. That's where you, the people would tear up the card and throw it because everything that it touches, it destroys. And it's like, and now the card's worth hundreds of dollars. And it's like, how many did you rip up back in the day? So it was like, this deck would have a ton of like one, one creatures. Right. And okay. this, this thing would probably only work like once, it, you know, the first time it would work great. And then the next times people would be more careful. There are still ways around using this strategy, but the first time that you use it is is really devastating. So what happened is like it wasn't know, a goblin deck, was it? Oh I, yes, it was a goblin deck. Oh so, god! Because so when you say one one red, I'm thinking, oh god, it's a goblin deck. So so here's here's how it worked, right? With, and let, can I guess that you had some Siobhan dragons in there just for the hell no, of it? No, 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 no Siobhan no, dragons, no, 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 none no, no, of no. that. So I would have like give me the goblin reinforcements, those little bastards. No, no, no. I'd have like these one ones. Some of them would have like the thing where they can attack the turn that they're they're placed in, in thing. So I, you know, I play a couple of turns. Stri- first strike. Yeah. Yeah. First strike, I think was the name. So I play a couple of turns and then suddenly I'd be like, okay, I'm going to attack you. And I would attack with like two or three one, one creatures. And you're like, why, why would I even bother blocking this? This is dumb. He's going to do three damage, whatever. I don't care. And I'd be like, okay. And so this one run creature gets, I think it was called bloodlust. It's like bloodlust plus four uh-huh. minus four, except it, it never killed the creature. So it just become like five, one. And then I'd be like, and another bloodlust. And then it'd be like nine, one. And, and you'd be like, whoa, that that's nine points of damage now. And I'd be like, yep. That's almost half. And, and then so like you would hit them with that damage. And then at the end of the turn, I'll be like, and now I use fling. And fling basically meant it, it was literally almost like you grab that goblin and you throw it at somebody's face because <laughs> it sacrifices the goblin to deal all the damage that it would deal to the player. So it's like you'd attack, hit him for like nine damage and then sacrifice it and hit him for nine damage again. <laughs> Oh, this this was after I retired. Wow. Okay, fling is from a set after I retired, so I don't I didn't know it. I love you say that. I, you say enough word and I and you say red and I thought oh is he gonna mention fork? But fork is no. probably so old school you probably didn't even use it. No 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 none of that. Yeah, th- that was one of my favorite decks where I just like sacrifice goblins and throw them and be like take that. <laughs> fling. That looks like a really fun card. Hang on. Was there's only two costs, red and one. Add as as an additional cost to cast a spell, sacrifice creature, fling deals damage equal to sacrifice. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> to any target. Yeah, exactly. So Jesus. So, so and it shows a it. goblin being flung. I love it. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> so just That's think about awesome. it, right? You put two bloodlusts on top of there, and it's like this is now deals tons of damage, and now I sacrifice it and deal. And this is a little level one one creature. Like he's he's worthless, <laughs> and he just deals like eighteen really funny damage. As- Magic the Gathering was actually the reason I got, I didn't get discouraged when I started studying Japanese and kanji, because I love kanji. I fell in love with the kanji and I I could, I I just love them. But I never got discouraged because I always told myself, when I was a kid, I easily memorized at least 3,000 or 2,000 Magic the Gathering cards. I knew all the cards. I know the cost. I know the names, I know the effects, I know the artwork. Damn. Some of them I even knew the flavor text. Like 
And I was like, if I can remember that much just because I enjoyed it, as long as I keep it fun, I can memorize a language, you know? And it's always was a thing in my head. I was like, what's 2000 kanji? Come on. I can remember 2000 Yu-Gi-Oh cards. I so think that it's just repetition. I think that's one of those context. things that is uh, an age thing. Like the younger you are, the easier it is. Cause like when I was young, like, I don't know, 10 years old, eight years old, it was super easy for me to start learning English. It was so, I mm. like, this is easy, dude. Like not even a problem. I was speaking English, like super young, like not good English, like not what, what I'm saying now. Right. With a, a terrible accent and all that, but I knew the words and I knew the meaning you, of the you words. You know, you have no accent, right? I mean, right now I don't, I, but I, I used I think to we've have this. Yeah. Yeah. You have like no accent. It's crazy. <laughs> It makes it makes me happy that people confuse me for uh, an American a lot of times because I'm like, oh yeah, yeah. This, that, 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 that's how that's how good my English is. People think I'm American. <laughs> that's how bad your English is. No, I'm joking. Hey, you know you could hey, people, you could look at it either way. <laughs> hey, people people say you're not good in English. I'm like, I was born and raised in Cleveland, Ohio. Okay, he gets a pass. He speaks uh, <laughs> Cleveland, Ohio. <laughs> Yeah, God, I was I was trying to give an example to my daughter. I was, I was giving her the same analogy, and she's like, "Impress me." And so she, I said, "Pick pick a random, I don't know, revised edition card." So she looked it up, and she googled a card, and she pulled up, and she's like, "Okay," and she told me the attack power, and I was like, "Okay, you're talking about granite gargoyle." She's like, "How the hell did you know that?" I was like, "And the guy who wrote the Underworld Cookbook, which is mentioned on the flavor text, his name is Asmin Mardikar Dyson of Caldecar." Oh my She's god. She's like, what? And she looked and I memorized that whole thing because as a kid, I thought it yeah. was cool. There was a long name and, and she's just like, Damn, you weren't joking. You retain a lot of knowledge. I was like, I'm full of absolute The other day she told me that it I don't know how it would translate into English what she told me, but she she was like weirded out at my ability to remember random useless shit. I think that's a dad ability at this point, yeah. honestly. <laughs> but she she was looking at Google and I just glanced over and I'm like, oh look that sheet music for a shamisen. She's like what? And she looked it up and she went into detail. She's like, it's sheet music for a shamisen. She's like, you don't even play that instrument. How do you know what sheet music for it looks like? I was like, I saw it once and thought it was it caught my attention. It was interesting. And you just decided to remember that. I'm like, uh huh. I, I wish don't, I don't choose what I commit to memory. It just happens. I wish my memory was that good because my memory has been getting worse and worse. But uh, well, yeah. my problem is I get stubborn. Like I don't. It's not up to me. It's up to my brain. And there's some things my brain just does not want to memorize. Yeah. And if it doesn't want to, it's not gonna. So I just learn to give up and say, okay, whatever. We're not learning that. <laughs> what would we memorize? We memorize and we forget. We forget. <laughs> exactly. It is what it is, as you like to say. It is. You got me saying that phrase a lot. You've rubbed really, off on me. It, it, I think it, it rubbed off. It, it rubbed off on me from someone else that I watch. I think it might have been an Asmongold thing because I think he says it a lot as well, and I watch a lot of his videos. So yeah, I was watching a bunch of his videos uh, in the last week because of the whole Blizzard thing, of course. And you know, he, I like his reaction videos a lot, and um his very animated eyebrows is, is mesmerizing. It's, it's but so he's, insane. He's really well spoken though. Like, oh yeah. He's amazing. Like a, he a, is absolutely talented. It, like just being able to ad lib a 30 minute speech, like, like it's a Ted speech. I'm like, this guy is really intelligent. Yeah. It's, that's, that's the funny thing about Asmongold is that a lot of people think that he's just this neck beard, you know, just lives with his mom and all these other things, which he is, but they just assume that that somehow correlates to his intelligence as well. And they're just like, you know, hygiene or his, the way that he lives or whatever somehow dictates how intelligent he is. And I'm like, no, you're wrong. <laughs> he's actually, he's you know, very smart. A, a lot of the times I see some of his takes and he's like, yeah, you know, that, that makes a lot of sense. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. He's fair. He's got good criticism. He's, he phrases it and presents it in a good way and it's entertaining and again, his, his animated eyes are just hilarious, which is why I think his reactions are good. And he does like what Toho does, right? Like the, the creator just lets his fans do what they want with his content. So like, I think he lets yeah. 
people just like clip and re-upload and edit his stuff as much oh, as yeah. they want and it i react and to a lot of it's great stuff. because everyone knows who he is and he's he's really interesting when you look at him and you actually watch his stuff i was watching his video talking about his experience with ff14 and it was really interesting because it's it's adding not only a lot of perspective to mmos that i don't know about but it was very interesting hearing him talk about his experience and and so far so don't do that come on <laughs> come on let's get not yet. Uh, oh, not yet. Come on. <laughs> maybe one day. Maybe. What do you mean? You get maybe out of me. Hey, listen. Have you have you heard about the free trial for Final Fantasy XIV that includes? <laughs> <laughs> it goes up to Are level sixty. Are you memeing 60. on me now? <laughs> yes, I am. As the legendary does it expansion. Feature, does it feature the critically acclaimed Dante acclaimed? from the? From the Devil May Cry series? No, 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 no. The critically acclaimed Heaven's Word expansion. You can level up to level 60. There's no time limit. It's fantastic. You should try it out. <laughs> One of these days. It's, but it's interesting, yeah. It, it's, He's fun to watch. It's been really fun. There was um there was one of his um n- not to stretch this topic too much. There's just one of his videos where because you know he's a big streamer and when he streamed Final Fantasy fourteen for the first time, there was like two hundred thousand uh, server issue. Th- it was not just the server issue. There was this thing where later he went back and he looked at like Google Trends, and it was funny because the thing that I said when I was reacting to that I was like, look, Asmongold has become self aware because you can see that on the third of July, or whatever, there's just a big. Sp- Spike in Google oh, Trends for Final Fantasy XIV because he started playing it. It was funny as hell. No, but he see I don't I haven't watched enough to know for sure, but it seems like he really has his ego in check, which was interesting, which is crazy because he's such an accomplished creator. Like he in the videos that I saw, he was really good about giving credit to the community and 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 not taking too much credit for himself, which he totally could because he's yeah. he is that influential, I think. Uh, but I don't know. I think I'll watch more of his stuff, and maybe he'll get me interested in FF14. Uh, so I did so, enjoy watching his videos talking about stuff. So I see. How, so I can't get you interested in 14, but as I see how. <laughs> <laughs> no, he he gets me interested in watching videos about FF14. Okay, that's right. You know, you know, know it's funny. I, I actually know. got uh, I actually got something that I've been wanting out of Final Fantasy 14 for a long time. Yesterday, which was the Phoenix Mount. Because I love phoenixes, and I was able to get the phoenix mount last night. It was good stuff. Nice. <sighs> but anyway. But to bring us back to topic, I think before we close, there's one topic I want to hit on you, which okay. is Legends of the Guild was announced. We didn't talk about this last time. I don't think we did. Or did we? And I just forgot because I'm I an think, old man. I think we talked about it already, but I hadn't watched the trailer uh, I hadn't watched the trailer yet, but I've watched the trailer since, and it looks amazing. It, it how it, that I I don't know how they're gonna cram that much story in fifty eight minutes, but I'm rooting for it. I'm excited. I know there was some more info dropping. I didn't even look at it. I'm like I'm it's almost here. I'm just gonna watch it. Yeah, I I can't wait to watch it either. And and one of the things that I was commenting on on my stream was how much uh that style because I even played it side by side to like the the freedom unite scenes. The Freedom Unite cutscene, and it it just feels like you know it's higher res and more detail and all that, but it feels like it was taken straight out of the Freedom Unite cutscene. It's crazy. It looks so good. Yeah, I, can't I was looking for forward it. to watching in English with Yuna because I thought it was English with Japanese subtitles only. But then they go and they release a Japanese dub trailer, and it's really well done. And she saw it, and she's like, "Oh, this is great! It's gonna be in Japanese." I'm like, "Damn it! This is a really good opportunity for her to get some exposure to English and." Now well, they go and they have an awesome you, dub for it. You She's ju- going to watch it twice. Exactly. That's what I was going to say. You just have to watch it twice. Like, that's how I learned English. So that's how Yuna can learn English, yeah. too. Like, you just tell Yuna, listen, you just watch this thing, like, 50 times until you memorize, like, the words that they're saying yeah. into the she'll word. Be, she'll be saying Groovios and stuff like that all over the place. <laughs> that was gnarly Kuga. <laughs> I'm excited as hell. So I'm I'm not watching. I know they gave more details about the backstory of some of the guys, whatever. So not I'm not gonna overhype myself because like that's just a dumb thing to do for something yeah. that's only 58 minutes. But if it's just fun, I'm gonna have a good time, which is what I said about the last movie. But at least this one, it doesn't carry a weird track record. So yeah, and and the premise is good. The premise is good. So like, I already like the premise. So we're already way ahead of of uh, the the next one. So. I don't know. I just hope it's enjoyable. I'm sure it will be. 
Well, I'm not sure, but I'm hopeful. I, Don't I th- burn it twice, man. I th- but there was there was a tweet from Andrew Alfonso, who was the Loke director on Monster Hunter 4 Ultimate, and he's been very intimately involved with the dev teams inside of Capcom. He worked on this personally. So he was tweeting about his working with the writer and working with the cast on this thing. I think they finished this thing years ago. Um, and so, like, knowing that they were directly involved in something story-related which is nothing that they didn't have that for the Anderson film. They were involved in just periodically he'd show them footage and they would give him notes on the monsters, but they didn't, they had no say in the creative of the story, which showed like that excites me to know. And he says, it's going to be a good one for the fans. They're going to really enjoy this. I'm like, if you've got, and he's a friend and he's also really good at his job. Like he understands localization Um, And he did a lot of work on World as well and trying to reshape stuff. Like, if he feels that fans can get excited about it, that he's got a track record. That gets me excited. So I was like, "Mm -mm mm-mm-mm. That is good. We'll see. Because, like, uh, it it definitely feels like this one is closer to home because, you know, it's it's not an isekai. It's actually taking place in the world of Monster Hunter, which is – a rich, vibrant world, like we talked about, it's got all of this lore oh, yeah. Lots and all of stories of, and all of these things. It, it's again, I'm, I'm still, I'm still curious. Like, can can we learn more about the the dirty secrets of the guild? That's what I want. I just want the dirty secrets of the guild. I know the guild is up to no good, dude. They're they're up to no good. <laughs> we'll have to wait and see, but uh, that'll be a fun one to talk about uh, eventually once we get to see it. We'll have to do a non-spoiler and spoilery discussion. Maybe we'll see. I don't know how much uh, content or if it's just going to be a nice small little topic. I don't know. Yeah. But looking forward to it. It's going to be good times. But uh, with that, we hope you guys enjoyed this episode of the Third Fleet Podcast. Like I said, uh, next week, I'm also not going to be around. Uh, Blame my wife. Don't blame me. And um, we're going to try to get another recording in. I'm not sure if you're going to have the time or not, Gaijin. We'll see. Uh, we're going to try to get another recording in so that hopefully we'll have an episode for you guys next week as well, because I don't like skipping out on weeks on, on the podcast. Yeah, I, don't I don't like really, it I really don't like it. So, you know, yeah. we want to, we want to keep it. Uh, I just look forward to talking. So yeah. it would be sad. <laughs> so we'll try to get another episode in and we'll see how that works out. But, uh, thank you all very much for watching as per usual. If you guys enjoyed this episode, hit the like button. If you did not enjoy it, this like button feedback's important. There's links to all things Gaijin. Uh, what, what is the next video that you're going to be working on? Oh God. You know, I had two video ideas and I realized that there one was okay. No one's going to watch this thing because it's like, why now? But I said, you know what? I want to make it. So heck with it. So I finally, I just made a video on Storm Soul sets for Monster Hunter Rise and the, and the four configurations I really enjoy. Yeah, you posted that. Um, I, haven't, I haven't seen yeah, it Yeah, that was, but... that's an old idea I had shelled for a long time. I had another video, but it would it would be way too drama. So I'm actually, I'm, I think I'm going to back shelf it because it would, tr- oh my God, it would piss everybody off if I made it. <laughs> it, 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 it. It just, if I told you the title, it comes off as, is cons- like stuck up. Oh it, my god! It, I can't. I don't even. Not now. It's I, so bad. But I don't, don't want to push th- you to I'll, say I'll, it. I'll tell but, you. Okay. No, I'll say it because this is this is a safe zone. Okay. And this is where people can tell me, yeah, Gaijin, that's not a good idea. Don't do that. You're just gonna set yourself up for being burnt alive. Oh man. Um, but I was gonna do a. It was a serious video, but a little tongue in cheek, in a tutorial of how to criticize Monster Hunter Rise. <laughs> <laughs> because I believe there are issues with the game, like there are with every game, that even I can talk about, because everyone thinks that I am, I I have excessive happiness and I cannot criticize the game, which is BS. There's plenty of things I can critique. But the thing is, like, I get upset and I say something, that people are like, oh my God, you're telling me that my opinion is invalid and to shut up. I'm like, no, I'm not even talking about you. I'm talking about the people who do bad, who just say trash, blah, blah, blah. I'm like, that's not even helpful constructive feedback. So I was like, let me do a video on how to give constructive feedback. State why you didn't like it. That's the most important thing. If you're going to make a comparison, tell me why you like the other thing. But I was like, you know what? This is going to come out the wrong way. People yeah, are going to people are going to call me a hypocrite. I you, you you did a tweet where you didn't back it up with all that stuff and I was like, you know what? I should not touch the subject. I should leave it. I don't so know. I think I'm going to leave it. I've, the, the internet has, has had enough drama. Yeah. Um, I just, and it's not actually specific to Rise. It's just an annoyance I have. 
in general. But the thing is, is I'm not perfect either. So no matter how many times I say that in the video, it won't it won't matter. People will say, who are you to, what are you, like a professor of critiquing now? <laughs> so I don't know. So now I'm lost. I don't know what to do a video on next. Um, I had all these ideas, but now that I'm playing Monster Hunter Double Cross with Yuna, all I want to do is go hunt with her. So yep. I don't know. I don't know what I'm going to do. I've been kind I'm of taking a, a break in a way that I just playing with my daughter. She's on summer break, but I'm a, I want to make stuff. I really do. I want to I want to give you a suggestion. Here's what you yes. do. You do a hunt with Yuna. You pick a monster that you think is going to be fun. You record it. And then you just comment over what happened during the hunt. Like maybe even something that she doesn't like or whatever. Like, but I've just done like, that before. And people just say, why don't you shut up? You talk too much. Or like, or they're like. Dude, it's like uh, th those, those people, like, you know, people that. I want to see you in this perspective. I'm like, oh, what am I going to do? Set up two Elgados and having us in some weird streaming situation. I'm like, we're playing to have fun. Well, I mean, if people want to see you in this perspective, just put her switch on your dock. Boom, done. Oh, wait, or she plays on the yeah. portable one, right? On the light? Or no? No, no, no. She plays on the regular, so. So, yeah, you could you could actually record Yuna's perspective, and then you could do, like, a commentary on it. And, you know, people that don't like commentary on gameplay videos, it's like, look, just just straight-up gameplay videos, I think, are only ever interesting if you're watching, like, a speed run or something. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think those are the only, like, non-commentary videos that are interesting yeah. to watch. Like, just a regular... So, what I might do is, I think... When we get through a bunch of deviants and other monsters, maybe my next video will be, I'll take some video of us hunting together, some from my perspective, some from her, and I'll just use it as B-roll for me to talk about what it's been like going back to Monster Hunter Generations Ultimate. And one, I generally solo that game. So this is like my first time actually playing through it with somebody, which is how it was for Iceborne. So it's kind of an interesting experience, and that would be fun to talk about. So and talk about what we like, what we didn't like, and some interesting things I noticed after all these years. And uh, maybe that'll be it. I don't know. But it's not going to be, I started playing Final Fantasy fourteen. Here's how I'm doing. It's not going to be that. So I'm sorry to crash your dreams. <laughs> I'm sorry, but that's not going to be it. <laughs> not yet. I, I just, I just want to talk to you about your favorite class, not class, your favorite job in Final Fantasy fourteen. It'd be so good. You're going to love the story. <laughs> it's amazing. <laughs> Is there a janitor in the game? I mean, there's a bunch of crafting jobs. You can you can do fishing. No, not, no janitor can't do it. No. Oh man. <laughs> well, guys, can you play? Can you play as a cat? Yes. Oh shit! No, I shouldn't have asked that. Okay. <laughs> Anyways, let's let's wrap it up. <laughs> we'll see you guys in the up. next episode. <laughs> Peace out, everybody. Thank you very much. Uh, wait, what's what's the? Oh my god. I'm I'm a little bit sleep deprived. Well, a little. I'm always sleep deprived. It is. Stay strong. Stay safe. And happy playing Final Fantasy XIV, which, by the way, has a free demo, which goes all the way up to level sixty for free. Check it out. A court claimed with winning the, game. I don't even know the whole spiel. With the critically Anyways. acclaimed episode. Critically acclaimed. <laughs> Have a good day, guys. Catch you in the next one. Happy Peace hunting. out. <laughs> <laughs>